Joe's wrist. How are you? Here we Hello, go. I'm doing good, and I'm excited for the conversation. Yeah. So, um... So they're debating the Great Replacement. I was supposed to debate Mouth the Infidel, um, and, uh, Scuff Dario on... Or I guess just Dario Rahim. He's called Scuff Dario on Twitter. And Dario Rahim on religion with, uh, Zanzi as my partner, and they... They both chickened out and blocked us without any provocation. It's very strange. Um, yeah, if you want to introduce yourself and tell people where they can find you. How's the audio? Uh, yep, yeah. my name is Roserist. I am a Swedish political commentator. I am a social democrat with progressive social values. And the main place I would recommend you look if you want to hear or see more about what I have to say would be my YouTube channel, which goes under the same name, Roserist. Okay, thank you. And then last up, Mr. Mouthy Infidel. So yeah, same question. You want to introduce yourself and tell people where they can find you. Hi, uh, I'm Mouthy Infidel. I guess I just, um, in my off time, talk about politics online sometimes. Um, you can find me at Mouthy Infidel on YouTube or on Twitter. Um, that's pretty much it. All right, great. All right, so today we'll be debating the Great Replacement. Each person can have... I'm increasingly convinced that Mouthy Infidel is a second cloned generation of Ben Shapiro that escaped and is using his powers for good. But. about five minute opening um then we will have open discussion at the end we will do a q a from the audience so if you guys have questions you can send them in through the powerchat.live we will um ask those questions at the end and we'll do closing statements and final thoughts after the q a so i guess we can get started with opening statements um mark did you want to get us started i can certainly do that <laughs> Right. Well, when I was asked to participate in this debate, I asked Brittany, the host, exactly what this debate was about. And I was given two different points in a text message that she wanted me to discuss. And both of these points relate to the issue of demographic change. Now, the first issue I was asked to address tonight was, is the Great Replacement real? Well, the Great Replacement, or White Genocide as some call it, is the process whereby people of European descent are being replaced in both their ancestral homelands or the nations that their forefathers founded. This phenomenon will lead to those of European descent becoming minorities in places like the US, France, Germany, and the United Kingdom by the end of this century. Now, I'm not really sure what there is to debate about this, as the Great Replacement is not only very well documented in terms of statistical evidence, but as human beings, we can also observe the world in which we live. And observable reality clearly shows us that white countries all over the world have experienced increasing waves of mass immigration, which have already transformed cities such as London into places where the indigenous people are minorities. Oh no, there are brown people. Whatever will we do? The humanity. That's basically what he's, he's whinging about. But let's look at the UK figures as a whole on demographic replacement. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna like, reply to stuff Mark Collette says for the most part. That's not any sort of tacit endorsement or, or, or an inability to challenge it. It's just, I'm not interested in that. We've seen this a million times before. I want to see how this goes when the debate actually begins. As they're very illuminating. In 1950, there were fewer than 20,000 non-whites in Britain, the vast majority of whom were first-generation immigrants. In other words, they weren't born here. These people made up just 0.04% of the population. Yet by 2011, the time of the last census, the non-white population of Britain had risen to over 8 million and accounted for around 13% of the population. To put this into perspective, in just over 60 years, the non-white population of Britain had grown over 400-fold, and since 2011, immigration has only increased. The trajectory is clear. White Britons will be a minority by 2066 or sooner. Now, some may say this is a natural phenomenon, and others, like myself, say that this is something that has been planned and accelerated by the establishment, supported by the media, and furthermore, I contend that those who have campaigned against such demographic changes have been vilified and even criminalized. So really, it's impossible to credibly argue that such a replacement isn't taking place. The only thing we can reasonably debate is whether this replacement has been a net positive 
or a net negative for people of European descent. And I would argue that the consequences of this replacement for white people, especially white Britons, has been, on balance, profoundly negative. Whether this has affected indigenous Britons through falling wages, through rising house prices, or through the destruction of our countryside, mass immigration, the resulting growth in the population of these islands, and the replacement of the indigenous people has led to numerous negative outcomes, not least the rise in crime, the rise in terrorism, and of course the sexual assault, rape, torture, and sexual trafficking of more than 100,000 British girls at the hands of migrants. But believe it or not, things will only get worse for white people as they become a minority. Whilst white people are constantly told that minorities must be given special privileges and a leg up, when white people become a minority in towns and cities, they do not benefit from their minority status. They receive no protections and are often treated appallingly as worse than second-class citizens. And the establishment and the media are regularly complicit in covering up crimes against white people that are perpetrated by those not indigenous to the British Isles. If white people are reduced to minorities, they will not be celebrated and protected. I like the swarm instead, of flies that's hovering around Britney's keyboard. Minority that will be repeatedly blamed for all the ills and all the failings of the multicultural state in which they live. Thank you. All right. Um, I guess we can go back and forth. So, Mouthy, you want to go next? Um, yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I guess um, I don't have much of like an opening statement because um, obviously me and Roserist aren't really taking the affirmative in this debate. But um, sort of, I guess, just with respect to uh, my general position on these points, I would say why, that, hang on, um, hang on. Why, why would you not taking the affirmative? Why, why would you not have an opening statement? It, it doesn't make sense to me. If it's a planned debate with opening statements where you're taking turns, which you must have known, have an opening statement. This is... I'll never understand this. This is not a power move when you're in a debate with structure and opening statements and specific times in which you can give out a structured explanation of your positions. Why you would just yield it categorically. Like, you're not that good. I'm sorry. Smartest person alive is not that good just to, to wing it like that. Um... With respect to whether or not demographic uh, change is happening, um, it obviously is. But I don't think that's really the debate. I think the debate is more, um, is this natural or, you know, I, I guess when Mark frames it as, is it natural or is it planned? That's a bit confusing to me um, because no doubt, whatever our stance on immigration policy is, it's, it's going to be planned, right? Um, our I think I know why this is unlisted. This is going to be a train wreck. They're not prepared. They're winging it. Oh, this is this is not going to be good. Immigration policy is is set intentionally, right? Whether we have open borders or closed borders, um, and so when it's uh, framed as is planned or natural, I guess I'm not really sure what that means. I guess what the question that I would focus on is well, planned planned means it's the result of deliberate human action. Natural means it happened without human action. It's not it's not complicated. Now, to that extent, like, like, the argument is that, well, well, no, a lot of it did actually naturally flow from people just following their interests and uh, going where their, their interests lay. There wasn't some conspiracy to turn Britain a, a darker shade of tan overall. Like, just, that's, that's all you have to do. That's it. It's is the intention, um, is the motivation for allowing in migration, uh, this idea that we need to erase white people or something like that. Um, I think that's an implausible story. I just think there are a variety of okay. uh, more plausible explanations for why um, people might support immigration. I think it carries certain okay. economic okay. benefits and so on. Um, and then I guess with respect to whether or not, um, uh, whether or not, uh, white people the consequences for uh, white people are on net bad um i 
don't really buy that the consequences are on net bad for white people. I mean, I think immigration brings a variety of benefits, um, higher rates of innovation, higher rates of economic growth. Um, the stuff on wages, I think, is a little uh, sketchy. Uh, Mark didn't really present any mechanistic argument or any data in support of his claim. Um, of course, it's the case that when migrants come in, that increases the supply of labor, which might uh, drive down wages. Um, but it's also the case that migrants also increase demand for products, which increases demand for labor, which drives up wages, which is why generally the literature on the relationship between immigration on wages shows that it's um, at worst like a wash. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, I think that there are a variety of, of benefits of immigration. Um, I think that all of the sort of negative things that Mark... Uh... Are they going to hand an easy win to Colette, a man who once mauled it about a TV ad for Up and Chips? Um, it's, I actually had hopes that they'd perform well on this. Rose Wrist, um, at this point, has a history of, of really badly prepared and, and really, like... Look, for God's sake, the man still advertises on his channel that he debated all type. He didn't debate all type. And when this was pointed out, he he said, well, well, hang, hang on, no, no, I, I debated a guy who was, like, all types, Ryan Falk's editor. But that's not all type. All type is the, the moniker of a YouTube persona. All type even went on to the comments of that. It's like, I, I wasn't in this. What is this? And it's still there. And it got him a, a massive audience because, like, well, that, that's a high-profile debate, right? <sighs> Fucking hell. It's a grift. It, it's, it's, there are, there are low, low standards for just across the board, frankly, um, in this sort of like vaguely Vosh destiny sub orbit. And this is good for growth. It's just, it's just bad. Like Mark's laughing here because he knows that. I mean, first, is Mouthy Enfield just going to ignore, like, the, the sexual assault point? Because that's something you need to have a strong retort to. Like, that's a, that's a, everything else that Mark is talking about amounts to, um, insecurity around, uh, just the existence of non-white people in, in Britain in general. Because that's, that's all he's pointed to, with the exception, with the exception, um, of the, uh, the, the failure to manage, um, uh, crime in, in specific communities of a specific kind. And there are retorts to that. But if Matthew's going to skirt over that, that's it, the conversation's going to come right back to that. <sighs> we'll, we'll, we'll see. The reason why I'm anticipating this is going to be an absolute train wreck, besides the fact that Matthew Infidel's winging this, I don't know if Rose Riss is winging this, it's unlisted. The debate's unlisted. Why is the debate unlisted? There's a couple of possibilities. Um, either this went really badly for Roserus and Mouthy Infidel, and I hope it didn't. I hope I'm wrong. Or, um, Mark Collette or Laura Taller said something really, really compromising that would result in a TOS violation, in which case you should link this stream or save a link somewhere because uh, this is going to disappear. Um, or, they say something compromising, but we'll see. Uh, or Laura would point to, such as increased racial tensions, is obviously the big one that Mark was mentioning. Um, I mean, we just have a lot of data on the kinds of things that uh, can go a long way to alleviate racial tensions, and those things include lowering racial wealth gaps, uh, eliminating residential racial segregation, um, implementing more sort of integrating institutions. So for example, there was a lot of data showing that when people live together with other races in college or universities, or when people work with other races in the military, that goes a very long way towards eliminating racism. Uh, and so, yeah, I just think that there are very um, plausible- Alfie, uh, uh, you're arguing with a racist. Like, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, the, the, the universe, <laughs> juxtaposing people of different ethnicities to desensitize them to their natural differences, not my position, that's going to be Marx, is not, is not a, it's not a, in, an easy sell for these people, like you're, you're, he's going to laugh, I, I'm seeing his face right now, he's going to laugh at this point, because he, I, I know what the reply is going to be. Uh, policies that we could implement to sort of alleviate these fears of racial tension and, and, um, infighting, uh, 
And I think that implementing those are a much better idea than the sort of, uh, you know, it just implementing an ethno state, which carries huge uh, opportunity costs in terms of we'd lose out on a lot of benefits of diversity and immigration. And also, it's just not very politically um, plausible or politically um, uh, realistic to, to think that we would be able to achieve that. Okay. Um, Lori, are you, uh, do you want to go last or? I think we'll, we'll go to Rose. <laughs> Um, all right, excellent. Yeah, so so we had two points for this, right? We had great replacement, and then should we preserve racial demographics? And then to Brittany, are we going to have this as like two separate segments, or are we just going to do all of it in one uninterrupted? Um, I think we can just do it in one, I mean. He has no opening statement. We have nothing prepared. They're going to wing this. They're winging this. This is... Okay. Okay. Yeah, sure. Okay, then I'll, I'll, I'll combine both of this. So, uh, on the great replacement specifically, demographics are changing. Yes, that's true, but that's okay. For a white genocide and for a great replacement thing specifically, what needs to be established for it to be considered a genocide and for the great replacement theory to be followed is you need malicious intent to harm white people. Just because policies are being put in oh place my God. that do affect the demographics in a particular way, that doesn't mean that that's the intended goal of- No, he can just- oh no, Rose, no, you don't need that at all. You can have genocide be the result of, like, industry, for example, with no malicious intent whatsoever to, like, indigenous American population, say, bulldozing ancestral territory, causing the total dissolution of their historical cultural attachment to a specific part of the land such that a culture is effectively eliminated like that's that's a thing that that's a thing that can happen they don't need to establish malicious intent mark collette's gonna is, is gonna easily concede that you know it's the it's the whole it's the whole moral busybody thing from like c.s lewis like you're oh they're, they're handing this to them on a silver platter No, you need you need to identify the meaningful site of cultural uh, identity and all that sort of thing in some place other than race. That's the move. You don't. Oh man! Like you 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 interrogate a couple of things. One, the notion of race that Mark is deploying, such that there's some inevitable consequence from people of different uh, external physical descriptions cohabitating a place. Um, cohabitating, cohabiting. Co-inhabiting? Inhabiting the same place. Um, that's that's the one. And then on on the other, you, you locate like, well, you're trying to preserve the distinctiveness of British culture or whatever. That is not located in the genes of the population. That is located in a tradition that is handed down and spread by, by acculturation, by word of mouth, etc. <sighs> Exactly, Titan. You lose at this debate the minute you grant that race, quote unquote, has any meaning in biology at all. Exactly. Like, asking questions about the format of the debate at the start of the debate shouldn't that, shouldn't that have been cleared up already? I I don't I I don't know anything about politically provoked. Is politically provoked partisan in this? Like they're 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 platforming Mark Collette and Laura Taylor, so I mean it's stands to reason, but. It's getting hot in here. This is not gonna go well, guys. This is not gonna go well. I bet you're I bet you're missing to all sad now. Of said policies. So for instance, during COVID, we had a lot of lockdowns that prevented, you know, businesses uh, that require in person person participation from functioning. Does that mean that there is a conspiracy from the government during COVID to run indoor mini golf like companies out of business? No. It's not the case, right? Because this is a consequence that obviously the state knew is going to happen. We know that certain businesses are going to suffer, but that doesn't mean that the point of the lockdowns was to make these businesses suffer and to have this unintended cost or to have this consequence in that regard. So once again, um, intent is very necessary and I have not seen that adequately proved. And I expect my opposition to be able to prove that today. Should they hold the position that the great replacement as it is presented and white genocide as it is presented is real. Furthermore, there's also questions to be asked about the motive for such a, um, yeah, for such a... Here's the problem. The, the, the crisis that Mark is, is construing this as, 
doesn't actually depend on it being deliberate. So Mark can concede that entire part of the argument and it doesn't matter and it wouldn't affect anything because his points don't depend on it being some nefarious plot by itself. It could be, he could, he could treat it as like, uh, sort of like climate change, right? It's like a, a slow shift as a result of unethical human practices that results in some bad thing down the line. That'd be Mark's position. So Rose Wrist, th these guys are just completely, they don't have their finger on, on where the pulse is here. They're, I don't know what they're, I don't know, we'll see. Maybe they'll, maybe they'll pull it back. Like if, when this actually gets into like a back and forth, maybe they'll pull it together. But right now it's, it's a really weak opening. Conspiracy. So a lot of people will often say the thing about how, hey, you know, from the American perspective, Democrats want great migration because it benefits them in the voting. Um, I think this is more of an issue with the political strategy for more right wing parties than it is to do with migration as a whole, because a lot of minorities, um, they are very conservative, especially when it comes to social issues. So it's very possible for a lot of right wing parties to tap into them as a potential voter base. And you even see the change of, for instance, Hispanic migrants, they're leaning more Republican than ever before. So I don't buy this as a motive either. That doesn't make sense. So I'm waiting to see another motive presented by my opposition in this conversation. Um, furthermore, uh, the on to the second thing here about whether or not we should preserve racial demographics. Racial demographics on their own don't really hold any inherent value. Good. And through okay. engaging in a wide range of policies in order to preserve that, we are missing out on a lot of way more meaningful thing that is going to impact people's lives in a way more material way. So for instance, there are questions to be asked about how this could even be accomplished in regards to potentially the curtailing of civil rights of minorities and non-white groups within Western countries today. That's something interesting that I want to see my opposition uh, you talk about. But then there's also, like Malfi mentioned, the opportunity costs that exist with having a political system that tries its very hardest to prevent these types of things. We talked about, you know, economic things, and there's a whole lot of other things we can talk about specifically as well. Things like social cohesion and the treatment of white people is also something that was discussed by Malfi a bit, how there's a wide range of different things we can do to minimize and prevent this from happening, such as curtailing segregation, improving economic equality. So I want to wait, so you're you're conceding the inevitability of what Mark's arguing. Why? Why? You're letting you're letting Mark just own the floor as as the as as the the grim realist here. Why are you? Idiots. Like they're not taking this seriously. This is just like, hey guys, look. I got Mark Collette on. We're going to debate Mark Collette. People know who Mark Collette is. This is going to be so exciting. We're going to get so many super chats. It's stupid. I throw that out there as well. And yeah, this is something also that we'd be interested in talking about. But overall, um, there... Exactly, Bubble Boy. Somebody should argue the wild card position. It's not genocide. It's a mission to bring civilization to the English. <laughs> are issues that come with migration to some extent however overwhelmingly migration and not having like an inherent value place on racial demographics and instead on focusing on what's going to give us the overall best benefits seems to be the better policy and the better mindset to have in regards to these type of things and we should strive to maximize the positives of these types of policies while minimizing the harms but a conversation about whether or not we should throw all of that out the window in order to preserve these racial demographics, in order to prevent these negatives that we see no really ev real evidence for, um, I think is a bit silly. And yeah, that's my overall take. They didn't respond. They they didn't respond to the the grooming or the rape issue at all. They just let that one slide. They they borderline even just assented to it as as depicted. The entire argument on Mouthy Infidel and Rose Wrist's side amounts to a, a, a the whisper of a gesture towards racial categorization being uh, a spurious way to to understand the the character of individuals or, or of people um, or the identity of culture, etc. And an equally vague notion that 
fully accepting everything that Mark is saying, basically, with the exception of the imputation of malicious intent by people in government and in the media, that, well, it'll result in some GDP growth. This is idiotic. Oh, man. What have I signed up for? Should have watched literally anything else but this. Right, um, Laura, are you back, or should we just... Uh, she's not back, but uh, I'm, a, <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> uh, I'm a husband. I've, I've been given clearance to read her opening statement. Okay. Uh, she, right. um, I don't know, I'll get started. I was invited here this evening to pa participate in this debate alongside Mark Collett and to debate the topics of whether the Great Replacement is real and whether we should preserve a, our racial demographics. The Great Replacement is a demographic replacement of European peoples or white peoples in their ancestral homelands or founding nations. So, from a British perspective, we're talking about the demographic replacement of ethnically British people in the United Kingdom. The fact that this is happening is undeniable. In the United Kingdom, we have a government census which is released every 10 years and which details information about the population of our country. The percentage of foreign-born people living in Britain was 0.5% in 1851. That's half a percentage. And that figure was very stable before and after that year for a very long time. Fast forward to 1951, which is about the time that mass immigration to Britain began, and the percentage of foreign-born peoples jumps by six times to approximately 3%. By 2011, that figure was 13%. There are plenty of other fit figures we can use to highlight our demographic replacement. In terms of ethnicity, the white and white British set share of the population of the United Kingdom, and in particular England, is dropping by around 5% per decade, a figure that will likely increase as contributing factors have also increased. The number of state school children of minority ethnic origin in England is around 33%, a figure which is increasing by around 1% every year and the number of live births in England and Wales categorised as white British is currently only 58%, just over half. Again, this figure is dropping year on year. I'd like to add that although the statistics back up the predictions of nationalists, we shouldn't need statistics to prove what is evidently clear when we look outside our windows. Towns and cities are being overrun. We are already a minority in our capital city. They're being overrun. There are brown people outside. Oh no. The horror. City, London, and cities like Leicester, Luton, Slough, and now also Birmingham. Even ci cities like Bradford, in which we have not yet reached minority status, are beginning to feel like foreign countries where pockets of isolated communities have formed. Our demographic replacement is now so apparent that it is spoken about openly by those who support it. Our elected officials, the media, and political pundits openly brag about our diverse nation and how our countries are becoming more and more multicultural. In fact, our demographic replacement is only denied when it is spoken about by somebody who is against it. One example of this is the left-leaning Guardian what? newspaper, who published an article titled The Last Days of... It's only denied when it is spoken about by someone who is against... Yeah, because they're, they're against it, you muppet. ...the white world in the year 2000. The article spoke about, and I quote... We are near a global watershed, a time when white people will not be the majority in the developed world, Britain included. Yet the same newspaper will call us conspiracy theorists when we share those same figures. In terms of how this affects the native population, we could talk about things like overcrowdedness, the environmental impact, housing shortages, uh, hospital queues, the increase in certain crimes, the hate speech laws that have been put in place to stop us from speaking out in opposition. Problems in the education sector and work-related problems, such as racial diversity quotas across, across the public and private sector. However, nothing comes close in terms of the negatives to those intense feeling. Sorry. However, nothing comes close in terms of negatives to the intense feeling of beginning to feel like a stranger and unwelcome in your own home. Facts don't care about your feelings, Mr. Towler, I suppose. In Bradford, a city that I mentioned earlier, which has a large percentage of Pakistani Muslims, mosques have replaced the churches, the shop signs are in Arabic, the people do not speak our language, the clothes shops are full of shalwa kameez and foreign food, and there's an overwhelming feeling of us and them. The 
Oh no, there's... You can get shawarma at a food court. These people do not want to integrate to our culture. Not that they ever could. They want to replace ours with theirs. As our percentage of the population continues to drop... Who is Laura Taller? What about Mark Collette? Who the hell is Laura Taller? I know the name. Trying to remember who she is. I've seen something with her before. Let's see here. <sighs> yeah, not important. Such problems will only be amplified. The solution for our people is nationalism. A strong nation state where our people can be safe and prosperous and where we can have self-determination. I wish this for the British people and for all other peoples around the world. Thank you. All right, so we can open up the floor now then. Yeah, I guess we can begin with um go off, uh, try to try to prove I'm not I'm not gonna bother dealing with Mark Clutter Laura Teller here because again, like the issue really is whether or not Mouthy and Rose Wrist just handed them a win. Because they're not going to say anything new. We, we've heard it a million times over. It bores me. I just want to see what happens here. Malicious intent with everything that's happening. I don't have to improve. I don't have to prove malicious intent. The whole point of the grave replacement is that it is happening. Statistically, it is happening. Why like clockwork, obviously. Like, how did you not anticipate this wrist? Rose, wrist, what do I call, what do I call them? The Swede. People are becoming a minority in either their ancestral homelands or the countries or the nations in which they found it. What you're trying to do is redefine it to say that we have to explicitly prove malicious intent or it isn't happening. Well, it is happening. It's been proven. Even your little buddy there, the other half of uh, Soy Squared, has admitted that it's happening. I mean, you two guys between you, I mean, you guys make Destiny look like the golden one, don't you? But you're here tonight, giggling away, mumbling and stumbling through your intros, and basically saying, ultimately, what we are facing today is an unprecedented situation where white people will be a minority. White people don't really like it. There's plenty of social tension, but... I'd have trouble trusting this guy to clean a bathroom, frankly. They might be given some, uh some small reprieve in that their interlocutors are categorically some of the most uncharismatic people I've ever seen. Apparently, Tyler is the deputy leader of Colette's new political org. Okay. But if we're all forced into one space and made to like it, that's going to be good because you guys say it is. And every time that's actually happened... What actually ends up happening is there is more conflict. Every time you force more multiculturalism and you force togetherness between people who aren't meant to be together, you create more conflict. Not meant to be there by, by whom? God? Where are, you, where are you going with this, Mark? But when there's more conflict, your solution to more conflict is that we force you even further together. Cause are there, like, instructions on their feet that say don't put into proximity with? will be the solution to the problem that you've created so you can sit there wring your hands um yeah i mean it, I, I don't i don't care don't about the rambling i don't care about the rambling so i mean you just said like that my, the evidence that i provided was because i said so Please, Matthew, right i mean i can up. like i can Please. reference you like a large amount of literature suggesting that uh, when races work together in like universities or in the military uh, this has a market in fact uh, don't reference a large amount of literature cite something Cite something he hasn't read. Ask him if he has read this. If not, why not, since he cares about this so much? 
this has a market effect on lowering uh, racism, right? So I can actually give you empirical evidence for this. You haven't really given Do me it. any evidence for the contrary claim. All you've said is... I mean, Mouthy, Mouthy actually could. He actually could. That exists, but he needs to do it. Don't just don't just gesture at it. Um, like, and and like God forbid, like if Mark asks him, give me a precise example. If he has to go searching for it, he's lost. Like you need to have this stuff in front of you. You've just asserted it, right? So I mean, I, no, I've just asserted just asking, that right? statistically, white people are becoming a minority, which is true. You're and whatever what learned report about. or big brained. Uh, big brained theory that you've got on forcing people to live together and getting to getting them to work together it doesn't really outweigh the fact that in britain alone you've had hundreds of thousands of white girls raped this is a rape epidemic that is being carried out by mainly pakistani muslim men but i'm sure that's all okay by you guys is your discord server for patrons only the link on the youtube channel doesn't work um i'll have to update that uh if one of my mods could please kindly put a link to the Discord server in the chat, that would be much appreciated. As long as you get all this wonderful foreign food, and I can't remember which one of you midwits said innovation. So, well, I'm not sure what innovations we've ever had out of sub-Saharan Africa, but I'm really looking forward to them establishing a Wakanda, you know, here in Luton or Bradford. It's not going to happen. Uh... Okay, I'm going to cut in here. So just on the question I asked before and the answer you give. So you agree with me. Yeah, I know Mark Clyde is a neo-Nazi. This is just not new. And that what's happening right now is not being driven by some anti-white racist bias. What's actually well, happening no, is that it it's is being driven by an anti-white So there we go. We bias. have malicious intent. So prove that to me, please. But I don't have to. It doesn't, that doesn't have to be. Mark's right. He doesn't have to because his argument didn't pivot on that. So it's just... It's not even Mark's arguments aren't good. Mark's arguments are garbage. The problem is that Rose Rist and Mouthy Enfield did zero preparation and just thought they could wing this without thought, so they didn't think about it. <sighs> Young girls are more likely to be sexually attacked by a white man than a POC, and he unsurprisingly gives zero shits. Well, of course he does. Because that's that's immaterial. They don't they don't look at those uh reports with horror. It's like, oh my god, look look at what the immigrants have done. They look at those reports and go, see, see? It's just like I said, like they're excited about it. I feel like you need either exceptional charisma or a firm handle on a bucket load of studies to win a debate like this, since all they have to do to win is just for it's quote unquote something is wrong. Um, there's another tactic they could have deployed, which would have been, which is usually pretty safe and uh, could have been quite effective. And that is you center your argument around a very tight, very modest claim that undercuts the argument that Mark and Laura are making. And you humbly go back to this, like, I don't know about that. We'll have to address that later. That's too complex for this debate. But you nonetheless have failed to address this. And given that you failed to address this, it doesn't seem to me like your your uh your your claims stand on anything solid whatsoever. Boom. That's that's it. Oh hey Merrick, how are you? proven malicious attempt intent but if it's anti-white bias racism, that's causing if, it if you, that means if that you it's driven with the effect and with the goal of millimeting white people by the way i never thought i'd start watching merrick's channel but i have recently and it's actually it's pretty pretty good and one thing i like that she does which i really appreciate which takes a lot of willpower to do is she'll recall like some some fact that's integral to a point she's trying to make realize she screwed it up and then go oh i'm sorry i got this wrong after expounding on it and then go back and say actually this is what it is and she'll just absorb that, which is like, I, I trust that in, in, inherently when someone's willing to do that. That's that's a big, big deal in my books. It doesn't matter whether you hated the bathwater or not. It's been replaced by, with baked beans. The effect is the same. You've got a bath full of beans, which is great. Right. Yeah, yeah, so we agree on the effect. Did you see Mark's XGF? She had huge swastikas. Yeah, I um, I actually had a video um, 
demonetized because I had that picture on a, on an old, a very old video I did. We shouldn't be here, which is negatively impacting our people. Do you have that evidence of malicious answer, attempt? And your um, dancing around it is not going to change anything, is it? Do you have evidence of malicious intent or don't just, you? Just to jump in, if I may, uh, the government know that this is happening because we know the figures, so they obviously know the figures as well. And That's they also so the, the entire argument is pivoting on malicious intent. They don't they don't have anything for everything else, which is frustrating because all that exists. Like you could, you could bring that to bear. Like every single point that Mark made has either a a, a very solid counterpoint where you acknowledge there's stuff going on, but it's not. The causal factor isn't immigration, and it's certainly not race. Expound on that. Boom. But don't just give nothing and then fall back to, well, GDP, and can you prove that this was done maliciously? If you're accepting the done part, that's that's the important part. I don't think I don't think Mark and Laura have any particular issue with imputing this to a blind process that needs to be corrected. You need to argue that this is not a thing that in itself needs to be corrected, that the problems they point to insofar as they are not overblown or, or factually untrue. They need to not assume that people like this are stupid. Because they're not stupid. What they are is, is well, in, in one sense they're stupid. Like, they're, they're intellectual black holes. But they don't lack cleverness. And they don't lack a minimal degree of, of savvy such that if you're actually not prepared, they can't run circles around you. This is what these people do all the time. This is all they do. know that the population they also know that the population are against mass immigration because they campaign on anti-immigration platforms before elections so best case scenario they know that we're being demographically replaced and they know that we don't want it and they refuse to do anything about it and worst case scenario they're doing it intentionally but i don't think it matters whether it's intentionally or they're just letting it happen either way they're letting it happen surely that's the thing that matters I think, no, it absolutely does matter because, for instance, if we talk about the intent and why this is happening, then me and Malfi can provide arguments and be like, hey, uh, maybe this isn't some big conspiracy to like get rid of white people. It just ends up being the fact that, hey, a lot of the policies that are very important in the economic development, in domestic development of these countries are going to be policies that favor migration. And that is the positives that we want to get from migration that we're trying to get at. And then as a side effect of that, demographics are going to change. And if we can agree on that, that that's probably what's happening and it's not some big, huge conspiracy, then it's going to be easier for us to talk about that and to talk about the effects and whether or not they're positive or negative. But if you guys have the perception... Why did they don't need to make it easier for you? Like, you've just seeded all of the ground, Rose. Like, it's over. You're like a few minutes in and it's over. You, you've given them everything. The first Vosh versus Sargon has proof that facts don't win debates. That was lost for a couple of reasons. Vosh was not good at debating people back then. In addition, I think he was actually spooked. And he was he was falling back on some really really not good not good tactics. In fact, he was falling back on tactics at all when really what, what he needed to be doing was not trying to overpower his opponent. He needed to undercut him like you needed to undercut his legitimacy and that's what you can do here like it's, it's it'd be fairly easy to do with preparation that would take a lot of time i say easy it would it would be a lot of work but you could do it but this needed to be planned and it seems like all they had was hey they're they're calling this a conspiracy in addition to everything else well if we can prove it's not a conspiracy or if we can prove that they don't have a base for calling it a conspiracy then then we've got him. bob's your uncle it's very easy but here's the problem that was just those were just the, the 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 horns on the devil right like every everything else they've they've allowed to sit so it doesn't matter um it doesn't matter if mark collette and laura teller can't prove that it's malicious which which they can't because they've conceded that it, that it is categorically without qualification
I wonder how Rose would prove a lack of intent. He doesn't have to. He doesn't have to prove a lack of intent either, but that shouldn't even be the focus at all. Um, that's going to evoke absolutely no emotional response from the audience, because if you're against Marcolette and Laura Towler, you're not going to think that even if there is intent, that it is malicious. And if you're against Mouthy and Phil and Rose Wrist, it won't matter to you if the intent is malicious or even there. Because the issue they have is not with the intent. They impute malintent because they have a negative emotional reaction to the existence of non-white people in Britain in any visible quantity. So... And that this is, oh, you know, these people hate white people and therefore they want to do what they do, then we're going to have a disconnect in that conversation that we're not going to be able to bridge that. That's why that matters. There are plenty of politicians in the United Kingdom that stand up in Parliament and say things like, um, we deserve this because of the Empire. They openly gloat about it and brag, it, brag about it. They're clearly very, very proud of it. So to say that there's no intent there when they're incredibly anti-white all over their social media accounts, I think it's very naive. So to be clear, when we say intent, do we mean the intent is to um, to to change the, 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 the racial demographics and to minimize white people? Or is the intent to argue for policies such as that of migration and therefore that's an, like another effect of it because See, just to illustrate just how absolutely pointless that line of approach is rose wrist and mouth the infidel could um what's what's the term could like stun lock uh laura and mark on malintent for hours and hours and hours at the very end of it they could just go well i mean maybe it is intended or not but you've conceded all of these things it's going on and it's a problem and you've just wasted all of your time. And in addition, you've made it seem like that's all you've got. Like, that's that's what people come away with this from. People like me come away frustrated because people like Mark and Laura come away vindicated. There's a difference saying between those two things. It's like the difference between, like I talked about in the mini golf example, is it that the government wants to, you know, run indoor mini golf out of business, or is it just that there are policies that they're aimed at getting at another positive and they're having this unintended effect? But migration isn't a net positive. You keep saying migration is a positive. It's not a net positive. And whatever positives you have, such as sort of yummy food or whatever other such nonsense, I mean, I like it when you people argue for mass immigration because your number one argument is always we get diversity as if diversity in itself is some sort of uh, magical shibboleth that makes our life better it doesn't and it seems to me that you're now already going down the route of define intent well we all know what intent actually means because we've all got dictionaries we've all got thesauruses we can all google things the fact is the most powerful communities in in human history have all been those that have integrated very widely with lots of other communities not always necessarily in um Not always necessarily in, in a in a spirit of, of kindness. Um but but no, uh cloistering has has aided precisely no power in human history, categorically. Politicians, the mainstream media and influential people who wield huge amounts of soft power in the West have said that this is a good thing, this is a positive, that white... Soft power does not mean word of mouth or influence or, or charismatic influence. Soft power refers to, um... It's the slow squeeze of the throat versus the gunshot to the head, right? Hard power is... is like overt military might soft power is things like um the ability to squeeze a country economically or an enemy economically or to deny uh deny access um things like that it's not it's not angelo merkel gets to to speak more than mark white people being reduced to a minority is a positive. They have said that. They say that the more diversity we have, the better off we are. And more diversity equals fewer white people. Well, that's because the identity of Britain is not white people. The identity of Britain is a political community, which, as a political community, as a community, benefits. Because it's not white people. That's th th Those two things are not equivalent. Um, if the if the uh if you had swapped out the ethnicities of 
the Persian kings and the Athenians uh, during the Persian Wars, it would have affected basically nothing in terms of how they organized politically, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So what they are essentially saying, I guess, I guess swapping out like skin color or something would be more more apt. Is that the fewer white people we have, the better off we will be, and that is not true because when you look at civilizational development, the greatest civilizational development we have seen has been here in Europe, and the people that we are importing from elsewhere in the world usually come from places where there have been the least civilizational development. And if you bring people who have created nothing to places that have created everything... Mark has not studied, quote-unquote, civilizational development. First of all, civilization as a term refers specifically to development, so civilizational development as such is... is redundant but more to the point when you actually like read the the history of of our of our earliest institutions and all the stuff that sort of kicked off that uh ever accelerating spiral towards the kinds of large-scale political uh, forms that we have now and science and technology and philosophy and all that sort of thing um there are there are direct there, there, there are an array of direct and indirect influences from very, very non-white places. This is... I don't need to tell you this. This is, this is obvious. And mix the two, there is inevitably going to be somewhat of a clash. Because people who have created nothing will find it very difficult to maintain the everything that have been created by others. Uh, do you want to go... Uh... Matthew, should I? Because I so go. far right now we can on the first thing about the intent is so once again we don't have any evidence for anti-white driver for this. All we have is a pro-diversity driver for that, which we agree that that's probably the case. Now we can move on to the other things we talked but about, such as the effect. Because pro-diversity means fewer white people. Do you think it's possible to be pro-diversity without despising or like being bigoted against white people? It would be very, very hard to separate pro-diversity from anti-white because every time something comes more diverse, the things you see taught in schools, the things you see pushed by the media, the different programs pushed by local and national government are always white, uh, sorry, always anti-white in their outcome. They teach white children to hate themselves. They impose quotas, which means it's harder for white people to get jobs. Jobs are no longer given out on the basis of the quality of the individual, but instead on the color of the individual. So when you have diversity, it always disenfranchises white people because that is its purpose. Um, yeah, so I mean, if the claim is that just having more diversity is going to lead to, you know, white people being harmed and marginalized, I guess just like, I, I don't know why this would be the case. I don't know, like, what evidence we have for that, right? I mean, I've suggested so far that insofar as we're worried about racial tensions and, um, you know, racial, uh, uh, racial uh, fighting, um, we firstly the effect sizes are very small right so like the biggest like recent meta-analysis on this found that like the relationship between diversity and social cohesion uh, is statistically significant and that diversity to some extent lowers social cohesion but the effect sizes were such uh, were small such that like diversity could account for like 0.66 percent of the uh, variation oh God, in social man. cohesion that was observed um so like the effect is like not that big um, you're, you're making a very apocalyptic story out of something that's uh, in reality very minor. And then like we know that there are things that can alleviate the impact of diversity on, on social cohesion. Uh, and I've listed what some of those things are, and you haven't really spoken to that at all. You've just kind of um, feigned incredulity about it. Which, no, I haven't. You know. I've, I've said the truth about it. What you're saying is, to alleviate the problems of multiculturalism, we need more multiculturalism. And the way you guys talk is... Mouthy has been rewarded very early on in his career for being very, very, very smart and clever for his age, and that is correct. However, as a result of that, he has lost the impetus to get smarter. And so now he has crystallized into a one-trick pony. And I think, with deep foreboding, that this is basically it. Is 
this is, this is just, uh, oh, that's, that's interesting, Zanzi. So I once crunched the numbers for Ireland and found that if you compare the declining Irish birth rate alongside immigration, Irish whites will be 50% of the population by roughly 4,280. Interesting. But the Irish right wing still insists that white people in Ireland are being replaced. Well, of course they do, because if they don't insist that, they don't exist. That's all they got. So. Like, like focusing on the social cohesion aspect would actually be very interesting, because then you can start interrogating the, the implicit notions of, of race and culture and the inherent link between them that Mark and Laura are actually relying upon for the 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 emotional and ethical force of their claims. But they don't have it in them to do. They, they haven't prepared for this. They haven't prepared for this, and they think they're geniuses, so they aren't flexibly responding to changes in the argument. They're trying to wedge in their, their malintent point, because it's the only card they have. And it's not the only card they have because they couldn't draw more cards. It's because that takes time to do, and they needed to do that in advance. They needed to draw those cards, and they just haven't done so. Frankly, a complete joke. We have presented here that there have been hundreds of thousands of white girls who have been groomed, sexually abused, raped, but it's brushed under the carpet by people who value diversity. Because to people like you, your diversity project is more important than white girls, white children living in a world which is rape free because these girls have gone through hell but you're happy for that as long as you get your lambuna or you can say the world is more diverse or you can sit on youtube because you're obviously allowed on youtube because you think all this is fantastic so obviously you're not going to lose your channel and you're going to make some money off that so that's why you support this it's absolutely pitiful and it's morally reprehensible if white people in their thousands were doing this to non-white girls you guys would be going mad about it but because it's white girls who are the victims it doesn't bother you so do you we think can that we sorry. don't support oh sorry uh, do, you, do you think that we don't support steps to prevent refugees from raping white women the best step is not to let them in well i mean if like i mean i mean sure we could eliminate any problem by just like stopping letting all people in and then stopping everyone from like having kids right like i mean if like say, like take any like i Yes, yes, Mouthy. That's the Nazis' point. That's what they want. Oh my god. Like This this is this is seriously Mouthy's retort to a to a neo Nazi. It's like, well, look, we could solve all of the problems that I'm just going to tacitly accept uh, your characterization of. Um, we, we could just solve them by, you know, taking mechanical measures to remove them from the place. But what, that would be racist? Mouthy, you're talking to a racist. Yes, Zanzi, the debate was a mistake. He's... This is why this was enlisted. These these people are. This was dumb. This was so dumb. Like they haven't introduced any other angle of attack. They have GDP, some a very vague gesture towards GDP growth from diversity, which has not been defined by them. Um, and uh. But 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 is it? Is it this thing that I'm just accepting is a thing, as stated? Is that the result of malintent? They don't care. That's icing on the cake for them. They don't care. This is literally a, this is literally a bread and butter neo-Nazi talking point in Britain, and they hadn't prepared for it. Yeah, yeah, that that is that's what we're looking at here. It's because they don't care about what they're debating for. There are no stakes for these two. That's one point that Mark is right on. Mouthy and Roserist do not care. If they cared, they would treat this as something serious. 
and they would either A, not have the debate, or B, prepare the hell for it. For the hell for it. <laughs> they, 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 there would be like, a, a, you would be able to point to like a Rocky montage of of all of the the, the documents. I don't why a Rocky montage. You know what I mean? They, they'd spend a lot of time preparing for this. They would have extensive references on their desk. They got nothing. They've got nothing. Why? Because what they really wanted was to have, hey, we debated Mark Collette and Laura Towler on YouTube. We're like, Vosh, subscribe to us. I, I take it that you're pro increasing like birth rates right and, and i am too through like um you know allowing like welfare policies or and so on that make it easier for people to have kids right um some of those kids who are going to be born uh as a result of those policies are going to end up raping women right but generally we take it that we have to oh, wait, 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 i've heard this argument before so what you're saying is because white men rape some white women in very very low numbers we should import other men from elsewhere in the world who rape white women oh. in greater numbers. Uh, Let's talk that, about this grooming gang thing, okay? Because this is something you, you bring up a lot the about the, 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 the Muslim grooming gangs, right? So the best piece of... Like, Malthi, all, all Malthi and Fila can do is just go, oh, that's fallacious. Like, that's not enough. Evidence we have right now for the demographic okay, breakdown of these perpetrators is the Home Office report on the breakdown of what these consisted of and who were the you main perpetrators the in those grooming gongs. What do you mean we don't have the Home Office report? report. I have it on the second monitor right here. Report on that. You they, didn't the release the, they didn't release the figures properly, but we do actually have a Wait, study hold on. Have but, you seen so, the Quillian one? Interrupt, <laughs> Rose, interrupt. You don't have the Home Office report. What do you mean Rose? we don't have the... I, I'm sitting on a 59-page report right now. Group-based child sexual exploitation characteristics for offenders. The Home Office report... Why are you allowing him to run his mouth, Rose Riss? Say no, there actually is, you're incorrect, here's the thing. I don't actually know that's incorrect, but like, seriously, like... And here's the problem, because they know they're on the back foot, because they haven't adequately prepared. Because this was not a thing that he even bothered to bring up. See, if, if he actually had this ready and prepped, if he was actually prepped to debate this, because he thought if this would never go beyond the malintent thing. If he actually had this ready, that would have been front-loaded. Because what you really want to do is have uh, an opening statement where you go, this is the problem with this point that they're going to bring up. This is the problem with this point that they're going to bring up. This is the problem with this point that they're going to bring up. Da -da 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 -da. And they need to sustain one, two, three, four, however many there are in order to make their case. And so when they attack one, you wear them down on that. So that after you reach a point of either ambiguity or, or where you've actually managed to batter them down, you go, well, even if I did concede that and I don't, they're still, that's, that's how you do it. But now he's timid because he wasn't prepared and he's like, I'm going to quickly scramble through this document. And the grooming gangs uh -huh. were sealed by the government and not released because they said it was not in the public interest to know the truth. Grooming gang review kept secret as Home Office claims releasing findings are not in the public interest. What you're about so, to So that, what am I looking at? What 59-page report am I looking at right I now? I don't know. You're looking at the one in relation to Operation U-Tree, which was historic incidences of sexual abuse within the establishment. The Home Office report on the Pakistan... Wait, sorry, Muslim Operation Group what? Wait, what was the second word there? Operation. tree How do I... What's was... the first letter on that? Really? U is it U? Is that the first letter of U-Tree? Why do you not know this? Y-E-W. Y-E-W. Okay, so Operation U-Tree doesn't show up a single time in this report. Just control F, Operation U-Tree, zero results. So that's not what it's about. So you're talking about something else. Why do you not have the title of the report, Rose? Just give the title of the report. Say what you're looking at. Say why it matters. Don't just go, I've got a report on my other monitor. I don't know what it is, but it's interesting. Was this a mirrored stream on Rose's channel? Uh... This is unlisted. It must have been mirrored on his channel. It's actually... This stream is much longer than the debate. Um, but it's unlisted it's nothing now. nothing to do with it. I'm posting this in so, the So chat what am I looking at the, then? I'm curious. You can see this and post it in the groups. 
The grooming gang review was kept secret as Home Office claims releasing findings is not in the public interest. So Operation Rutri doesn't appear a single time in this report that I'm looking at right now. That right now I'm looking at a report called the Group Based Child Sexual based Exploitation Characteristics report. for Offending. And what you said it was report. is not true at all whatsoever. So I'm just, in this I can't wait. At some point in this debate, I would bet Don't laugh, Rose. some amount of money that one of these guys is going to say that they're jewish i've got a feeling that that might happen <laughs> okay so i can read what that what one of the parts of the executive they're not really sending their best at the very least summary here so a number of high profile cases including the offending in rotterdam investigated by professor alexis j and rockdale group convicted as a result of operation span the convictions in telford have mainly involved men of pakistani ethnicity beyond specific high profile cases the academic literature highlights significant limitations to what can be said about the links between ethnicity in this form of offending researchers found that group based cse offenders are most commonly white so i yeah i, I don't know what to tell you you seem to be making this no, up i'm seeing a report right now no, you said it was something the else but on the grooming gangs you can google it was sealed by the government then because what am i looking at i need to understand what i'm looking not at looking at the government report so what am i looking gangs. at you can go i don't know what you're looking at because i'm not looking at your so very easy rose i'm not looking at the government report that was sealed if that's true or i don't know what you're talking about i have a government report right here it says government of whatever the hell you guys call your government in Britain, at the top, and it says, doo -doo 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 -doo. balls in your court, Mark. How are, are you defying this factual data? What do you have to, to bring to bear against it? And then you, you, now you can argue about data. Because now you're something concrete. Rosewrist doesn't even understand what he has. Like, the, the bare fact that he's like, it's, it's the, the yew tree report or whatever he calls it. Um, the bare fact that he can say that is like, well, I just did a Google search for this document. It doesn't say you anywhere. Why do you not know this? Like that, you're gonna bring in a document. You need to know the document. There is nothing that looks worse than bringing a document to bear in an argument, having your opponent explain the document to you and how it doesn't serve your point. That kills your credibility. They have just they have just taken your fist, turned it on you, and punched you with it. And we're and it, and the person who's done that is Mark Collette. That's the level we're operating at here. And it's, Mark Collette is, in, in terms of like arguing like, like political philosophy or data or science or all this stuff, like the actual dynamics of the stuff taking place here, Mark is an idiot. What Mark is not is rhetorically incompetent or, or unclever. This was the result of basically a moral failure on the part of Malthy and Rose Wrist because they didn't care enough to take this seriously this was this was a game like this this was not this was not smart I'll, 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 I'll read out the text to this again if you want to because it was so explosive and it exposed the level of abuse that white girls were going through at the hands of people of migrant descent so the government had to I mean, I'd say that's not the Operation Utree report because Utree was investigating media figures, mainly, mainly Jimmy Seville. No, I, I have no idea. Um, but, like, if Rose Riss is going to bring a document to bear and stop with those, like, it's just, <laughs> oh, my opponents are so... It doesn't look good if you're, if you're being batted about. Unearned smugness is a really bad look. Be better to err on the side of just not being smug at all. Just like, just engage sincerely, if you're going to do that. I mean, the wise move would have been not to have the debate at all. Um, but it's an opportunity, you know. Like it's it's exposure. It's like woo woo. We're we're important. We're taking on the big bad guys. The big bad guys are of course so stupid and obviously weak that we don't need to prepare to debate them. It'll it'll just it'll just happen by itself. No. To seal it. <laughs> to stop public unrest. Laura, you've got a very interesting statistic from an actual Muslim So once again, I, I don't know what I can, so this is a new strategy. Yeah, I'm not aware of people saying that the I report I'm looking at doesn't exist, uh, but who knows. I I, I, you didn't know the name of your report, Rose. You didn't know the name of your report. As far as you're concerned, the report didn't exist. Like you weren't prepared. 
you might be looking at Rose Wrist is the one where they changed the classification of the perpetrators that they were looking at so that they could open it up to um, you know, different styles of abuse of, as well. But um, there was a, a study done by Quilliam um, a number of years ago, I think maybe three or four years ago, um, which had a, a good sample size, and that reported back that 86% of perpetrators were, um, I think it was either Pakistani or Pakistani Muslim. That's actually been removed from their website now. There was a report that tried to debunk it, but if you guys want to go into that, I can also debunk that report. But if you haven't seen it, I suppose it doesn't matter. But I think that's the most accurate report that we have, which said that uh, it was around 86%. So that's a huge overrepresentation. Uh, at the last census, Muslims were around 5% of the population. Look, look, I would personally avoid this debate just because the amount of work it would take is something I can't commit myself to right now to do it well. Like it takes work. This is a very hard debate to have, especially given the fact that these people are veterans. They've been doing this for a very long time, and they've internalized a lot of talking points that they can deliver with with conviction very efficiently. Which means that you need to have like a very detailed and specific strategy to undercut those and to account for the possibility that they introduce new things that make those fail. They've got nothing. He's, they're scrambling through their computers looking for something. They're not interrupting and saying, well, actually, Mark and Laura, that's wrong. Here's the thing. That's what you need to be able to do. But they haven't done their homework because this isn't important to them. And Pakistan is where around 2% of the population. Yeah, I, I don't know what, what this 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 Killiam study is. The fact that you already said that people have had a lot of serious disagreements on it makes me a bit worried. I think that trusting the Home Office, which seems to be probably no, the most comprehensive data set had, on this, is going to be a lot more reliable than what you're referencing. A lot of people haven't had um, disagreements with it. There was one study that tried to debunk it and failed. Um, so when I, I when I Google was... it, there is I, I'm getting a bunch of, of things specifically about how this thing is misleading. That's the first thing when I Google Killiam study grooming, I'm getting things about it being... Uh, but... Okay, when when you when you are researching a document, here here's something that I do. Whenever I'm reading like a new philosopher or somebody that I haven't read before, one of my strategies as I'm getting into it is I will Google search so and so is an idiot. Reddit. Why? Because if if there are any salient critiques to be had of a thinker somebody mad enough to write max faber was a fucking moron is going to link something or somebody underneath is going to link something and there's going to be a conversation which you'll see more moderate voices and and pro voices and anti voices and all these different people and you will have like the the, the beginnings of a roadmap to figure out how to actually evaluate the stuff that you're reading rose wrist should already have a dossier of all of the major uh, complaints and and replies to those complaints about the reports that he's using, if he's going to field it in debate with a highly critical interlocutor like like Mark or like Laura, um, especially when the stakes are what they are. Yeah, that's exactly right, Sanzi. It feels like just another online debate to them extracted from the real world and for p political entertainment. It it's entertainment. And that's the fallback, of course, right? What do you mean political consequences to this? I'm an entertainer. I'm just a guy on the internet. Like, we're all guys on the internet. That's the human condition now. That's where a lot of... That's where most political discourse is done. Yeah. Why, why are you not listening to the words, the Home Office report on the grooming scandal that was commissioned was never released because the government said it wasn't in the public interest? I don't know what I'm looking at here if, if you're saying this no, isn't released. Yes, that's established. And I think that's going to be Mark's retort. Like, you don't know what you're looking at. You're looking at so I can read out the title for the fourth hand. time if you want me to. You're waving your but... hand around. Your limp wrist is flapping in the air. The soy is spilling out from your orifices. You don't know what you're talking about. And what you're trying to do is weaselly explain your way out of the fact that hundreds of thousands of white girls were sexually abused by men of migrant descent. But you don't care. Wait, men of migrant? It's migrant descent now. See, that's that's something to pin them on. That's something to pin him on right there. I thought you were talking about migrants, Mark. Migrant descent? Well, make a decision. Are you making a racial argument or are you making an argument about immigration? 
and now you can now you can wedge in like a debate about about uh race ethnicity and culture and all that sort of stuff and rose wrist has some experience debating this so this is this is like a a point that he could actually use let's see if he actually does that he, he may if he does you could you could salvage this like a tiny tiny bit i don't think he's going to i think he's i think he's done but you could you could let's hey rose here's your chance to redeem yourself because that stands in the way of your diversity project. So, once I mean, again, so, yeah, so on, like, like, can, I'll just say, like, oh I mean, no, really? Uh, this isn't an issue I have looked Mal into. Mal the infidel. I mean, here's a challenge: make it through a sentence with. This isn't an issue you've looked into. You're debating Mark Collette. Why are you debating Mark Collette if this isn't an issue you looked into? Migrant descent wouldn't a man from France be considered a migrant or an Irishman? Hey. I'm in North America. We're all of migrant descent. Which, I mean... <laughs> probably want to particularize that a bit more, given what we did to the natives here. But, like, you, you see the point. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm of Irish descent, or so I'm told, so... I think I'm off the hook a little bit. I was dead at the time. Anyways, um... It, <laughs> So roses, they're not going to reply. They're not going to reply to that. They're not going to reply to that. Mouthy's going to go. I haven't looked into this, but like you don't, you don't know. You've looked into this. You have looked into this. Mark is not going to be nice to you because you're showing your belly. Like you, you scramble and you look into this right now and you keep silence. So you can bring it up later, at this juncture. You don't get to this juncture first of all, but like at this juncture. God. No, 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 no. No. Without saying um. Okay. <laughs> um, so the uh, the point I was just going to make is that, like, I haven't looked into this issue, but uh, even granting the, the premise... Uh, kind the... of sounds a bit like um there. Are we letting you okay. off on can that? I just, can we I have two brand that? new debate strategies. You're not allowed to say um, and you're denying the existence of a report that I'm literally looking at my monitor. These are, these are high-level tactics. Bro's I'm just aware of quiet, going please. On. Yeah, I mean, so even if I grant the, the premise that we have this big problem with uh, with with rape gangs, right? If that's true, right? I'll, I'll I'd have to look into it more. I, this is just not an area of research. If it's true that this is like a big problem, uh, and the scale is such that's not how you're debating Mark Collette. Why are you debating Mark Collette if you haven't researched? anything that Mark Collette talks about. Like... Oh my god. Such that it warrants restricting uh, the amount of refugees from this specific area that uh, Britain is allowing in. The then that's specific fine, area, right? as in the West. I don't know what you're talking about. You said okay. That the the West isn't a specific area. It's a notion. <laughs> I don't, I don't, the West. It's Pakistani immigrants specifically, right? That was your claim. I was just being facetious. I was saying the place where we should stop immigrants coming into is the West, as in, don't let them in, and we don't have the problem. But if these grooming, I, I take it that these grooming gangs uh, are coming from a specific uh, demographic, namely men, probably a specific age group, probably, you know, not too young, not too old. I, I doubt okay. like 70 year olds are engaging in this. And okay, okay. There's the germ of something here. He might, he might be able to pull something from this and from a specific country that being pakistanis right and so if this is a big problem then fine that might uh that might warrant uh restricting immigration from that specific demographic but that's a long way from justifying like forming an ethno state right i 
earlier when we were watching this, I, I anticipated that there were, there were several possible reasons. I anticipated several possible reasons for why this debate is unlisted. One is that Mark Collette and Laura Teller say something that is against YouTube's TOS, and so they get the stream banned. They've come close, but they haven't yet. One is that the debate went very poorly. And the other one was that Mouth the Infidel and Rose Wrist said something very compromising. I did not anticipate we might get all three. That's unreal. It would have been better if he just shut up for the rest of the debate. They weren't even arguing for an ethnostate. See, the, the problem is that, like, that, that whole line of argumentation would work if they didn't have the agreed-upon trope, because they're allowing this. That Britain is just, on some metaphysical level, by default, a white place. So it's not the construction of an ethnostate. They're referring specifically to the destruction of an already existing ethnostate, as, as Mark Collette is characterizing it. Um, that has the legitimacy of of being a, a, a kind of a, like a primal occupant, right? I'm not sure if that's the, the term, but you know, like they're they're like they're 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 Aboriginal to that place. It's it's they're the first. So like, yeah, maybe maybe it kind of sucks, but like the reason why that kind of argumentation has some weight in the American context. In the sense of, uh, like, like natives here having a right to their land is because it was it was taken by force by a foreign power. You don't really have that in this case because we're we're not talking about we're not talking about an invasion. We're talking about the movement of peoples lawfully within borders, or at the very least. Uh, privately, peacefully, like uh, not not necessarily in in consistent with the law in all cases, but we're not talking about like Putin trying to blitzkrieg into Ukraine. We're talking about some guy trying to move to a place where he can have a better life than where he came from, for whatever reason. <sighs> All right, so we have some uh, we have some information on the report. So, did some googling. There was a government U-turn on the report after a public petition came together against keeping it sealed. That report is what Rose is looking at, but they don't realize it. Uh, and then Adam Davies uh, amends that a little bit. It was a quote unquote revised version of the report that they eventually released. Basically, concluded with more research is needed because not enough data was available. Thank you, that's actually helpful. It would be more helpful if Rose Wrist was able to say this himself, because, you know, he's relying upon the report. And for some reason, it, but for some reason it just wasn't pertinent to, like, either understand your opponent. Like, this is basic, like, Sun Tzu level stuff, right? Like, you don't know your enemy and you don't know yourself, you're going to lose every battle. Well, here we are. Hi, Johnson. What have I walked into? A terrible thing. You've walked into a terrible thing, Tequila Sunset. Which is odd, considering how the Anglo-Saxon folk are not the quote-unquote first peoples to inhabit the land of Britain. Celtic folk preceded them. Yes, this is true, actually. Um, but I don't think Mark is, is going to make fine-grained ethnic uh, delineations at that level. No, no, it's usually all ages, and the problem is that it's not that they don't they don't all ages, all ages, huh? Just just gangs of gangs of eighty year olds. That's that's what the that's what the talking point is. Don't seem seem to stand up against it. The families they cover it up. I mean, lots of people work in takeaways or as taxi drivers and that kind of thing, and it happens under the noses of other people in their community. 
and it's never brought forward by their families. Um, but it does happen to people of all ages. But can I just say, um, the first topic of the debate was supposed to be whether the Great Replacement is real. Uh, can I just clarify, do you two admit that we oh, are God. minorities? So once again, there's nothing to admit here. There's no concession here. None of us are arguing with the fact that demographic change is happening. That's not an admission, it's not okay. concession, that's nothing. That's just a, a don't statement just, about don't a, just... a Yeah, I mean, we no. love our knowledge yeah. in our opening, but you weren't here, so I, I don't blame you. But, okay. but you. I, I have a question for you. Um, Wait, so you're just accepting their characterization of it categorically? You just object to the phrasing? What? So when you said that the, the, the Killiam study had like a good sample size, uh, is it true that the Killiam report had 264 cases over 12 years? And did you call that a good sample size? Uh, thank you, Johnson Pike, for the $5. Watched you uh, on and off the Doomer Politics arc and the Flowers arc, etc. Also came from the Nathan Ormond community, so way back. Uh, why'd you cut ties? Is Nathan Ormond uh, digital gnosis? If, Nath if Nathan Ormond is digital gnosis, um, my, my general issue there was uh, they... they it started off as a really promising channel where they were like critiquing bad philosophy done in the service of religious uh, apologia, apologetics. And I, I had a great deal of appreciation for it because they actually had some level of, of skill in doing so. And they were, they were, you know, they, they had an educating, an educative platform. Um, but then it, it, it slowly turned into, uh, let's, let's start bringing on religious people to, show how funny they are like in a zoo um and then finally i had a uh, a debate with with them sort of emerged organically um on an open hangout um and there was just a categoric unwillingness to you know interrogate basic colonial attitudes towards people of different religious groups it, it, you, you the debates on my channel you can go see it yourself i don't really want to rehash it but i just i just ethical reasons basically um I used to have regard for what uh, they did, and I don't anymore. They've uh, they've they've gone downhill. I hope uh, they. I, the I hope I hope he he returns to form at some point, but. But but it was a representative sample. And, How do you know? Um, so two hundred sixty four over twelve years. Do you think that's? Does that sound representative to you, as compared to the thousands many, of things gone over by the Home Office report? It, what do you think is better, many, thousands or two hundred sixty four over twelve years? Do you think there are? That it's happening in, in pretty much every city. So you, you think that there's there's only been 264 instances of grooming over 12 years. Is that what you're telling me right now? Oh, hey, hey Mark, don't save her. Don't save her, Mark. Don't save her, Mark. Come on, let me ask Laura some questions. Okay, sure. That's fine. That's fine. Bail her out. Bail her out. Have a look at what you see. Use your eyes. Observable reality. I could start reading the names of those convicted. The fact is, already said, and you can Google this as well, the Home Office report. Why aren't you interrupting him, Rose? Like, God's sake, man. This is not this is not the time to chuckle with your pipe. Oh, the fool. Uh, no, he's he's You have like the the faintest shadow of a point here and you're just seeding the ground. What on this issue was sealed? What he's saying is not actually the Home Office report on this because it's been sealed, but he's desperately trying to defend the, mass immigration. The, the Korean, yeah, wait, so, the so really quickly. The Korean study didn't set out to prove that it was a Pakistani Muslim problem. They didn't, I mean, I think it's a Pakistani guy that, that ran it, actually. Um, they looked at a representative sample and then they... See, here's, what, here's why opening statements are important, especially if you're going second, right? So your opponent gives an opening statement. They lay out the terms of the discussion. The, this is the, these are these are the fulcrums around which the outcome of the debate uh, pivot, or is that, is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, when you give your opening statement, you have the chance to remake the world, you to remold the whole landscape. You can say, well, no, actually, these are the terms that matter. And if you can more forcefully keep to your to keep to your terms, if you, if you can get them to start arguing those, if you can make it so that like now now you've you've switched the advantage to your side now you control the field they're on your territory and if they can't address those and if you can forcefully bring it back to those or if you're able to dismiss what they're saying if you have a tactic to do so and there are ways you can do so mark is relying upon like 
gross conceptual, uh, a, a gross level of conceptual looseness here. That he does not have the intelligence, like, for God's sake, we're talking about, like, really difficult issues involving uh, data and demographics and a whole bunch of, like, hairy political stuff. And his response is, just Google and use your eyes. Why do people just let other people cut them off without standing up for themselves? Some people are under the... I don't know. I think there's a few things. I think Rose Wrist has utter contempt for his interlocutors, which is justified in one sense, but he doesn't respect their ability to... He doesn't respect that they can actually beat him. He thinks that they can't. And they can. Um, he thinks that he can just laugh at them and that will suffice. He's also on the back foot. He doesn't have the confidence to actually be aggressive because if he is and he can't speak, if he like ups the ante and then freezes up, and I, I've done this, like every everybody's done this, we've all experienced this, you'll have an argument with someone, it'll escalate. You'll bring it up a notch and then all of a sudden you'll find you have nothing else to grasp and then they do. And now you look really weak and it can undermine the entire thing. Um, this is damage control at this point. These These two are sweating. And they're not sweating because their opponents are right, or because their arguments are insurmountable. They're sweating because they did not prepare. As to why they didn't prepare, I have no idea. Either this was off the cuff and they didn't have time, in which case they shouldn't have had the debate. Um, because one of two things could have happened. Uh, better people could have held that debate and won. Or we'd be complaining about somebody else and it wouldn't be Mouthy Infidel and Rose Wrist. Like, you may sp like, you're right, Pogan. It's very easy to just go, you may speak when I'm finished, and then start railing off your thing. If you have something to say. If you don't. I said, these are the results. So, but to be clear, do, do you think, think that there's only been 264 that? instances of, of convicted grooming offenders over 12 years? Is that what you're telling me? I, I don't have the report in front of me, so I don't because, know. Because when, 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 when I said that there were only 264 instances over 12 years, you were like, well, how many groomings do you think that there are? So I'm asking you, do you think that this is the amount of groomings that there are? No, I don't think that's the, the amount of groomings that there, there are. But okay. I don't know if that's how many is in the study, because I don't have the study in front of me. If you have the study... But you, you felt confident enough to say that there was a lot of representative sampling, but you don't even know what the sampling looked like whatsoever. Is that Am I clear on that? I remember... That, that would be a very strong retort if he had provided his own numbers that Laura was trying to contest. Because neither of them can actually bring the data up onto the screen. So what you can do is go, well, hang on, you don't know this basic information about, about like, the, the, I don't know what you call it, like the, you don't know the meta around these reports at all. You're demonstrating, like, a, a clear lack of familiarity with the issue. Why should we trust that your interpretation of these texts that we can't see, that you can't recall, that you for some reason don't have in front of you, why should we trust your interpretation of the data? That, that'd be great. If, if that before was set up. But Rosewrist just had an extended dialogue with Mark about how he doesn't know what document he has in front of him. And, like... We, we've established here in the chat that that document actually is precisely what Rose Wrist said it was. But he didn't know the history of that document. He didn't know to reply that. Like, he, he, didn't, he didn't know to... He, he didn't know. And he didn't know because he didn't bother to find out. Because he thought, oh, I've got the document. That's all I need. Like, he probably skimmed the abstract, or whatever they have in place of an abstract for that kind of thing. Um, he probably looked at the results. Probably said, yeah, yeah, it's easy. Probably had it on a tab. But there was no strategy here. He had no opening statement. Mouthy had no opening statement. Like I don't know what they thought would happen. Like they go into a Zen state and it would just it would just flow. When I read it, that it was a representative sample. Okay. Sounds... Do you have the study in front of you? Post it in the chat on StreamYard. The Killiam study. Um, I'm looking at a review of it right now where it states wouldn't be surprised if what led to the lack of preparation is overconfidence in the rightness quote unquote of their position feeling they had no need to research something so obviously wrong yeah basically um, I mean I'll, I'll I won't do debates on stuff like that like if, if it would pain me to research for a debate because of like the the banality of of the position of my interlocutors 
such that I will probably not do a good job. I'll just refuse. Like that takes, like, like it's not just a matter of being smarter than your opponent. You have to be, and it's not just a matter of, of being able or having the time or taking the time even to do preparation. You have to like be in it, right? You have to care enough to do it well. And you don't, you won't do it well if you don't care about it. And they just, they just don't care about it. They just don't care. Like it's obvious. Now Mark and Laura are corrupt. They care because they get recognition and they get money for playing this role. And they might even really believe it. They're stupid enough, but it doesn't matter. At the end of the day, these two came in prepared to fight. These two came in thinking their opponents would just fight themselves for them, which is a gross mistake, especially when they are demonstrating as, as scant familiarity with their positions as they have so far. The fact that you would admit in a debate with Mark Collette that you haven't looked into the, into the grooming gang talking point, it's done. Just check out at that point. Just call it specifically how many uh, what the sample size look like so i'm so reading is it the, is it the study itself Post um, in the chat. i'm seeing that please i can i can pull up the study itself what i'm currently reading from is a website from policy insight that is titled when bad evidence is worse than no evidence killiam's grooming gang's report and its legacy and i'm under the subtext by, I mean and i'm under subtext of bad science and it says that the killiam <laughs> report sample of just 264 convicted offenders over 12 years is clearly very partial that's what i'm reading about i can try to find the pdf of the killer report but i'd be very surprised if they're just straight up lying about the sample size here that seems to be a very odd thing to lie about but i can check that for okay, you well, but i doubt i'm being correct in the chat but what i did say is that is the best study that we have and it isn't every single grooming instance within the united kingdom but it's the best one and the only one to my knowledge that we have because as mark says the home office one hasn't been released so so what is the report group-based child sexual exploitation characteristics of offending from december 2020 from the home office what is this report then what am i looking oh, at by the way it's, it's worth it's worth mentioning that that i'm looking at that link right now it came out in december of 2020 the uh, article that mark linked was from like february of 2020 so it's very likely that they originally weren't intending to publish it and then they did right that seems like the most likely scenario given that the is, fact that so we're looking at that the is actually exactly what's happened we, we've established this they should have known this though like you should have had this to hand the report what's happened why is that what's happened then what report are we looking at mark the why don't you post the report? His Aryan brain can't understand, understand the timelines. I, it's just, it's too difficult. Oh, man. I clearly understand timelines. The Home Office report into the grooming scandal has been sealed. These things are sealed for a number of years, usually actually a century. This is factually wrong. Um, we've determined this, so... <sighs> or maybe they'll capitalize on that. And the reason they're sealed for that length of time is to ensure that those who were part and parcel of any of this are not alive when they're unsealed. And the reason it was sealed is quite clearly, um, well, there's multiple reasons. Firstly, it will be overwhelmingly migrants who carried out these crimes. Secondly, the police will have been complicit in them. Thirdly, the girls will overwhelmingly have been white. Fourth, the local councils MPs and other people involved in politics will also have been aware of this. Fifth, social services will have known about this. We already know social services have been involved in this. And sixth, and most likely, there will have been massive community um, involvement from the wider Muslim community. And because of all of these reasons, the official report has been sealed and it hasn't been. All right, by the way, this is the end of this debate, right? Because I just found a petition on change.org or petition.parliament.uk. Originally, apparently, they didn't release the report. Then there was a massive petition called Release the Home Office's Grooming Gang Re Review in Full. And then it was debated in Parliament. And then the government responded to the petition, saying that the government was going to publish a paper. This was posted in May 2020, saying that the government, in fact, was going to publish a paper. Um, um, releasing the findings of the review and then that paper was published in December of 2020 so See, there is a god so you're just wrong the full report hasn't been wait, wait mark mark i wanted to do a very simple thing i want you to open a google window right now tell me when you've done that <laughs> Come on, open a google window i'm just i'm going to make you do a simple i'm showing you how to seek out information because you seem to be struggling with that a lot 
So, I know the report has not so been Mark, it seems full. unable to Google. For anyone at home in the audience, all you need to do... Uh, I didn't realize how tense I was from that. Good God. <sighs> well done, mouthy infidel, you sweet, sweet lad. Keep... Ugh, fucking hell, man. It doesn't matter. This was a colossal... I mean... <laughs> Good job at least making Mark Collette look like a moron by the end of this. Not that you that he needed your help, but... Oh, man. Finally. Of Is people. open a tab of Google, search Home Office Report Grooming Gangs, and the first result will be a PDF titled Group-Based Child Sexual Exploitation Characteristics of Offending. And you See, look. Oh, fucking hell. He should have had that line ready for as soon as he goes. But that report, that, re that report was sealed, sealed for a billion years. Uh, actually, Mark, Google, it was sealed, and then it wasn't, and here it is. Behold. Rose is being nice. Rose is not being nice. Rose is not being nice at all. Rose is playing nice because he came in unprepared. And so if he doesn't play nice, he will be devoured. Because there's like a musicality to this, right? Like you have to earn your beats. There's nothing worse than like, like in terms of civility, uh, you are allowed to be like, you, you can be civil and patient. And, and your opponent can be overbearing. And you can allow that to accrue. It's like the stamina meter in Sekiro, right? You can allow that to accrue so that once that reaches a peak, by the end of it, you you have earned like a hit back. And you can actually like, you can get away with with shouting or swearing or whatever if you're right and if your opponent has been uncharitable or or has has committed some faux pas or something they've been bad in some way you're then allowed that and it hits harder especially if you're right um if if you're not right and you you start you be that person you're the the belligerent one and you're you're rude and overbearing and arrogant and you go on the attack It's... Exactly. Roses roses underwater. This was a gasp for breath. Honestly, Mark is not the best debater. Lost to Destiny on a debate on the same topic. Yeah, but Destiny's a very good debater. Whatever else you can say about him. He's actually very good when he's on his game. Um I don't know if Mark is a good debater because his opponents here were profoundly weak. But it would be better to have assumed that he was the best debater. And to have basically had to have to put on kid gloves to, to manage him at his level. Than to assume that he's he's just stupid and that therefore you don't have to prepare at all. Yeah, exactly. It, it's identical to the Demon Mama debate in some ways with vegan gains. And vegan gains is, is is a prick in his own right, but um, she was not prepared for the conversation that they had. And the difference was she actually went aggressive as opposed to trying to be docile. She she was a little less smart about it. Um, she went with bravado. She thought she could just uh, rely upon her her innate wit to kind of wing the conversation that she could um, bank on the uh, hostility towards vegans in her audience, on the obvious stupidity and arrogance of Vegan Gain's position. She could just levy that against him, and she wouldn't have to prepare or actually engage in argumentation. As a result of going on the offensive, though, she looked really, really bad when he was being sort of docile and, and, and calm, and just pointing out, like, you're not engaging, though. Like... You're just making these off-color remarks about vegans, about 
about me. You're you're making like ridiculous hyperbol hyperbolic statements about how um, by dint of using Nestle products, uh, vegans are engaging in in child rape. Like it's she looked really really bad. To their credit, Mouthy Infidel and Rose Wrist at least know to avoid that. The problem is they shouldn't have to avoid that because they should have been prepared. They should have been prepared. Now, Mark Collette, finally, because he 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 made he made a gap that was easily corrected, and thank God Mouthy actually thought to check that. But it's it's also just another testament to their lack of planning. See, Rose Wrist didn't know this until Mouthy Infidel found it. Which meant that this was being researched in real time by Mouthy, who then shot the message to Rose Wrist. Like, you needed to have that earlier. It doesn't matter. Most of the audience has checked out at this point. You will find the report that we're talking about here. This isn't sealed. This is right there no, with one Google search that Mark seems incapable of doing. A report that is not about the grooming gangs. The grooming gang report was never fully released. It is still sealed. You can say whatever you want, but those are the facts. Okay. And the fact is that you sat there with- he, No, you're wrong. Sorry. That's Rose Wrist. Stop leaning back. Don't you dare lean back. Don't go- uh, uh. No, go. No. You're, you're wrong, actually. This is the report. Here, I'll pop it on the screen for your enjoyment. Like- such a smug, stupid look on your face. Actually, actually, though, actually, though, I mean, I'm going to I'm going to save this face of Mark's because that's just that's going to be the new thumbnail. Oh, yes. Yes, it is. But like, wh why? Why are you why are you smiling and looking smug and cozy when you you flubbed the whole debate? And thank God. Mark said something so stupid. Like, Mark did something factually wrong, that, that you barely had the wherewithal to check. Barely. Because ultimately, you don't care that these girls were raped. You don't care when there are negative consequences for white people of mass immigration. All you care about is that the Multicultural Diversity Project carries on, and you can sit there crowing about it, making money off it, speaking to your YouTube community about it, because that is your political slant. And I can tell you this now, I am sure that both of you believe in uh, feminism, you believe in all manner of uh, left-leaning feminist garbage, but when it comes to actual real women's rights, i.e. the right not to be raped by gangs of migrants, you people are awfully silent. But hold on, we're actually in Sorry, favor of women, women not to be raped by anybody, okay? Not just gangs of migrants. I don't know why you threw that in there. I don't know what your take on this is, but I just thought that I would point that out. Go on, Matthew. That's your retort to that. that. That's your retort to that? Here, hang on. Let me, let me see if I can dig up something. Just off the cuff. Oh, here we go. He's written a book. The Fall of Western Man. I wonder if we can find a full text of it here. Uh-huh. 
Aha, here we go. And now we'll go to the index. Actually, let's go to the table of contents first. Let me pop this on the screen. Let's see if we can't find this. Okay. So here we go. Contents. Okay. Death of the loving mother, the destruction of the family unit. Okay, let's look at the role of feminism, 91. Return briefly to the example of the honeybees. Each bee has a role to play. Da, 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 da. The same is true of Western civilization. As no bee mocks another because of the role they carry out, no man should sneer at a woman, and no woman should scorn a man because their role in society may differ. Like, he effectively characterizes women as, as birthing units. That's basically their role in society here. Um, interrogate that. Like, like ha have some kind of reply. Like, anything. Anything at all. Not just, hey, we're, a, we're, we're against rape too, bucko. Like, that's... Why is that all you got? You're debating Mark Collette. Can I say really quickly? Yeah. So just, I like, it, it's amazing, right? Like I've been looking at this for like five minutes. Somehow, like already I know more. Exactly, Zanzi. You don't get to sit back and look smug with the only reason you even know Mark was lying was because your debate partner figured out what your report actually was. Unbelievable. And, like you have, and this was like your main point, right? So firstly, the article that you linked, right? The article that you linked said that the reason that they weren't going to uh, release the full report is because there was information that was operationally sensitive to the police i.e if it went public it would hinder the police's ability to do their job but then later on in the year uh was he trying to play was he trying to play oblivion music there is a time and a place my friend the uh, government released a report uh, releasing all of the full findings of that report that weren't operationally sensitive, and that's the report that Rose Wrist was looking at, right? So the report that Rose Wrist is looking at contains all of the relevant information on the data regarding Muslim rape gangs. It just excluded some parts of the report that were operationally sensitive and that needed to be kept private in order for the police to do their job, right? Is the report that you are looking at the one with two? Thirty minutes ago, that was that was a great point to make. Well done, Mouthy. I think we are offenders because if. If it is that report's also inaccurate first of all there's no basic information in the report for i think it's 1200 people if the other 1100 people uh 30 percent of them i think it is don't have their ethnicity recorded and then of the ones that they actually do have an ethnicity for i think it's something like 30 percent of them are white now that's an underrepresentation anyway because our country was 87 percent white at the last census so if you're looking at the, at the government report which me and mark think you're looking at that's inaccurate anyway Wait, so, so which one do you think, so think we're looking at them, which one do you think we're looking at can you say is that it again? the one where it's 2,300 offenders in total? Uh, 2,300 doesn't appear a single time in this PDF, so it doesn't uh, appear like this is the one we're talking about. But the I... there's no. Oh. This word does not appear. That is not. Okay. Hmm. 
you don't actually read books, Rose, so you don't know this, but um, there there are problems with trying to say that this this thing is not implicated by this text or is not talked about in this text because on a word search I can't find the precise locution under spelling I you, we can't see with terms we can't see like on on a PDF document. They're just throwing chaff. Yeah, don't let them come back to the report. Hammer the point that it was released again. Exactly, Leyland. Like, th that, that's the one. They have no credibility. That's what you need to hit. Like, what are you, what are you arguing with them for the joy of it? You're trying to win. That they released instead of the, the one that they were supposed to release. Uh, there was so much missing information from it. The, ma the majority of people didn't have their ethnicity recorded. And then when it came to white people anyway, they were very clever in the media, and they said the majority of people are white. Well, it's a white majority country. So 23,000 doesn't appear a single time in any report. capacity in this report we're looking at. I think you're talking about something different. But we seem to be stuck on this grooming thing on the reports. I mean, I would say that we're, we're correct because you, you guys have failed to, to demonstrate this. And when we look up evidence, everything you seem to say seems to not be true. So moving away from the grooming gang specifically, uh, we can also, talk about wait, some... Can, can I mention one more one. thing, right? Sure. Because so in addition to the fact that the report you were looking at has all the relevant information and just excluded certain things that were operationally sensitive. Yeah, and so, certain things like the actual ethnicity of the vast majority of no, the they, keep they, talking mouthy stop letting him interrupt you the, the police were, yeah, you're just wrong. The police you're were just complicit wrong. in it you know you're just wrong. having a whitewashed the... having a whitewashed water uh, j uh, you're in a brawl you chose to forgo opening statements you are in a brawl you can't fall asleep in a brawl He's going to punch you. Down You're just wrong. Yep, the were report. recorded. Released, <laughs> it's in the report. Released does not constitute releasing the full report. Now that's obvious. That is obvious. And also, are you like listening you to what I'm go saying? Go through the names of the. No, were you born yesterday? He's not listening to what you're saying. He's talk talking to you. He's talking to the audience. Mark knows what he's doing. People, which You're not you tracking. Can, who have been convicted, and you look at their mugshots, observable reality tells you they are not indigenous Brits. And that's the other thing that you people always fail to do. Well, let him do his ramble about anecdotes, Malcolm, and then we'll switch to something reality. else afterwards. Right. Because we're stuck because here. I was going to try and get another point out, but you just can't. No, it seems very difficult. We'll just move yeah. on from Google Games up to this. Your worldview is as simple as that. Dude, that would have been. That would have been weak by itself, but it would have demonstrated like a minimal degree of bravado, if at the very least, or a minimal degree of bravado of boldness, if that had been done during the debate. But they clearly muted themselves, because this is on Rose Wrist's channel, and are just... Yeah. Alright, cool. Matthew, what's the no, next thing? Go ahead. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so I mean, I guess we can move on from this. Um, I don't know what we want the next point to be um, i mean, yeah, we, I mean we, th this whole thing started from you pivoting from the point about social cohesion to start bringing up like the grooming gangs right what, what mean, are you talking pivoting social cohesion when you have white girls on mass being raped by migrants so no don't bring that up cohesion. we've gone over that and white you don't seem to be able to provide evidence for that that's satisfactory so we'll move on to something else become a minority in towns like rotherham and telford and the government have covered this up because multiculturalism state enforced multi see look you can that's a legitimate tactic you can do you, you can try to reconstrue the previous exchange in light of a recent win as you being overly generous to a fault and now we're just the gloves are off now we're gonna move off this point or we're gonna eat you alive kind of thing like the tough guy thing it's like you're you're you've already demonstrated you don't know what you're talking about here so we're we're gonna let you can you can run your mouth and we'll move on but we're we're done here like you can do that if you haven't been silent and passive for the whole debate and clearly on the back foot, clearly unprepared. They look... Yeah, they look exactly Zanzi. They look disinterested and bored when the topic is grooming gangs and rape. It doesn't matter what side you're on in that debate. If you look disinterested in that, 
something's actually wrong. That's the kind of issue that demands some demonstration of investment if you're going to be debating about it publicly, which is what happened here. Much more so when you're debating it publicly uh, with someone who, if they succeed in getting any kind of purchase on the broader culture, which people like Mark have, um, will, result, will result in potentially policies getting pushed through that will destroy people or encouraging people to take it upon themselves to enact that without the government. culturalism is the holy shibboleth of our society so it can never be criticized so when you're talking about community cohesion i'm saying <laughs> there is no cohesion yeah, this is actually no, unbelievable you know, thing about. Right? it's story and time it's too early for this okay so we can talk about so there are issues that exist with enclaves to some extent that does arise from migration we agree that this is something that can happen and that it's something that does exist to some extent so the question should then be okay don't agree you bridge build when their territory is on fire you, you don't you don't try to offer all the branches at this juncture it's like no we agree you've got serious concerns after you've offered basically nothing you had to be given <sighs> Because, for example, what if Mark had just said, the report is inadequate? And then he gave reasons for why the report is inadequate. They would have no retort. Why? Because they didn't know enough about the report. They didn't know what the report was. They didn't, they didn't know about critics of the report. They were relying on, it's okay, we'll just Google really fast. That was luck. That was pure luck that Mark Collette didn't know the history of that report. That was that was a gift from the gods. Because you guys don't seem to want to fight us on the things about, for example, economic benefits and stuff like that. So how do we there minimize no these types of... There are no economic benefits of migration. Did there you just no say that? There are no economic benefits. There are no, there are no economic benefits. Unless you take raw rises in GDP, not GDP per capita, but raw rises in GDP as the uh, benefit, there is no benefit. What people end up doing in countries that grow their population to cause rising GDP is you have overcrowding, destruction of the countryside, you have falling wages, falling quality of life, but people who put raw GDP on a pedestal, they are fools. And that what is you... exactly what Western governments have done. When you look at the effect of migrant workers on the West, it is always bad for people of European descent. And you see this in the UK. P&O ferries have just sacked all of their British workers and replaced them with foreign workers because they can pay foreign workers cheaper wages. This comes out time and time again. And simple supply and demand tells you that if oh you keep God. increasing the supply of workers, the wages for those workers will what is the mindset of these people like like just like oh my god this guy like Like, what, what world are these people living in? They look terrible. I'm on their side in this argument. Well, I mean, as much as I can be when they concede as much as they do. But, like, I'm on their side in this argument. And I'm just sitting here watching this with rage at them. Because Mark and Laura didn't win this debate. Mouthy and Rose won it for them. Oh, it's you just don't know how supply and demand works, okay? Like, sure, when more workers come in, that increases the supply of workers. You know what else it does? Increases the demand for products, which increases the demand for workers, which increases wages. Which right? increases this is jobs. Why the impact of immigrant... This is like this is like uh, supply and demand 101, right? This is why the impact of uh, immigration on wages is generally a wash, right? Quality of life in the West is not going up. Quality of life is getting worse for numerous reasons. And one of those reasons, or a major driving factor in the worsening quality of life, is mass immigration for multiple reasons. That doesn't speak to anything that I just said. I don't know why you saw fit to just start rambling about nothing after I do it. I'm not rambling about nothing. I'm saying 
It, Mouthy, restate the point. That's not how this works. It, it, you, that's not how this works. You don't win because you can sit back and go, oh, technically I said a right thing earlier and you said a wrong thing. If that is not conveyed and you're not convincing in doing so, then you lose. Like, there, there, there are no brownie points for being technically right if you manage to make the technically right point look worse. Pushes down wages. I've just given you a real world example that's happened in the last month of uh, basically British workers losing their jobs for lower paid migrant workers. And I've stated that not everything is about growth in raw GDP. There is also quality of life. So generally speaking, when we're trying to uh, analyze the impact of immigration on wages, we don't point to specific anecdotes and say, hey, look, these are wages that had their, or these are- No, no, we don't give wages. actual examples of white people losing their jobs to migrants, because that would defeat your point. Well, no, it doesn't defeat my point. That's the problem, right? That's why I'm saying you shouldn't bring it up, right? You should try and bring up something that actually no, would defeat no, my No, no, you say- you. No, because pointing to decon a decontextualized aggregate of, of, of cherry-picked cases doesn't actually give you a systemic analysis. That's why. You just say that. You say that banally, like this is like like procedural, because it is. I, I feel like I'm watching people on an alien planet. I've, I've never in my life... I can't I can't imagine how you would think that this would fly. Like they're just not taking this seriously. They're not only not taking it seriously, they seem blissfully unaware that their audience takes it seriously, their opponents take it seriously. There are serious consequences for this. Like do they do they realize this is being seen? Like, yes, obviously, Mark's wrong. Obviously, it's stupid. You don't refer to, like, individual anecdotes and say, well, this is what's actually happening, Mr. Scientist, with your data. That's stupid, obviously. We don't need to go into that. What we need to go into is, is what we have gone into, is why Mouthy Infidel can't retort to that. Why can't Rose Risk make a retort to that? Why are they debating if they can't? Why are they debating these people if they don't care? Point so that we could have a more fruitful discussion, right? Because when we're trying to analyze the impact in general of immigration on wages, we don't, it's not fit. It, oh yeah, and exactly, Tequila. They haven't, they're not giving, they're not giving positive data for the economic benefits anyways. That's a losing argument regardless, because like someone like Mark Collette is going to be perfectly willing again to uh, say, well, it's worth the cost for all of these cultural things. Like they're, they're, they're just, Rose and, and Mouthy are just going for the absolute, like, even if they win, they don't win because nobody cares about those things. Those just aren't important. I think it's youthful ego and how Twitch debates are often just spectacle. I mean, they are, but you generally see better than this, right? Like, I, I, I don't know. I, I shouldn't be I shouldn't be comparing like a hippy dippy uh, debate panel with this, and and wishing that they had approached this issue with the same level of gravitas as the person in the corn cob outfit, right? God, that corn cob guy would have done such a such a better job of this. Why does he even wear the corn cob outfit? I mean, like, I, I can understand sort of, like, the absurdism of it, but you're condemning yourself to having to wear a corn cop outfit in all of your debates till the end of time. Oh, speaking of mass immigration, my biryani is here. One moment.
I don't know, Merrick. Like I, I would I would I would like to be sympathetic or not sympathetic. I would like to be generous that way, but at the same time they they should know better. And frankly, this is how you know better. Uh you get your ass kicked and you get punished for not taking this stuff seriously. And then you don't do that next time. They don't need to do that next time, because uh Mouthy and Rose are smart. They are not stupid people at all. Which is why they're culpable for not doing a good job and, and playing with fire like this, right? That's that's my take on it anyways. Here's the thing, like, younger than them, I knew the stakes. Younger than them, I guarantee you, someone like Mark knew the stakes. I mean, he knew the wrong stakes, he's a, he's a nutcase, but... Like, you choose... You choose a specifically political type of, of, of job. Um, you choose to engage in politics because you care about stuff, or because you want to be seen doing well in that in particular, or any number of other things, noble or less noble. But what you don't do is put yourself into a contest with a notable as a nobody and, and fail to prepare. So hopefully this is a learning experience is all I can say, because I don't, I don't want to repeat of this. It's not sufficient to just say, hey, here's a group of people who had their wages docked by immigration, right? Because there could be another group of white people who had their wages increased by immigration. This is why when we're doing statistical studies on the impact of immigration on wages, we want to look at averages. We want to look at the aggregate impact. Now, we can disaggregate this based on, like, different income levels if we want to, right? But even that, it, it requires more than just, like, pointing to, to anecdotes uh, and then extrapolating from that statistical generalities, right? E economics is just a little bit more complicated than that. Well, thank you for that word salad, but it still doesn't change the fact that we see time and again Western <laughs> You dishonest intellectuals and your words. Workers, people in the West, uh, France, Germany, the UK being replaced by migrant workers who are willing to work for lower wages. This has happened multiple times. There was a huge scandal a few years ago during the middle of COVID where fruit pickers on farm for farm work were being flown in from all over Europe and British workers weren't being employed. Oh, These scandals happen time. Also, Mark will cite tabloids as evidence for his arguments, like when he brings up the Rotherham thing, but tabloids were the only papers that would report on that type of thing. I wonder why. <sighs> See, I'm, I'm reading all of these things about how stupid Mark is, and I agree, but like, I'm seeing so many opportunities just let slip away. Because, again, like, it's the internet. These aren't These aren't like scholars that they're debating. These aren't people who you don't know what they're going to bring up because they're just so smart. They've done so much research. We we, did, we just don't know. We just have to do our best and um, try to respond to new stuff as it comes up. Everything Mark says is online. Everything's available. Mark's, Mark's uh, internet footprint is just... A, a an orchard of of things that you could use to to take him apart limb from limb i think this is what happens when it's all theoretical and you don't have any experience or emotional investment in the suffering of others plus youthful arrogance and gamification yeah yeah basically i don't know I mean, you're right. I'm, I'm, I'm having trouble. Like. Look, 
All touching aside, white genocide is delicious. Let's keep going. Time and time again. And he yeah, has led no white to people huge had for the, they, they said that no white people had applied for the job, so they had to outsource it to other countries, and then it was leaked. I think it was 35. Actually, I think, I think Mark even cited the existence of ethnic food as a... Uh, as evidence. Thousand, or was it 3,500 British people had applied for the jobs and they'd all been declined? Yeah, I, this is all just kind of confusing to me because I think I gave like a very clear explanation of why pointing to anecdotes isn't sufficient when we're trying to analyze general economic impacts of certain policies. And then rather than actually addressing any of that, you just gave me like another anecdote, right? Do, I mean, do you just like rely on your audience being too stupid to understand what I said so that you can just not address it and like pretend that- No, what we rely on is real world examples that back up what we're saying. What we don't rely so on that's is a yes the George like Soros funded <laughs> report okay, that tells everybody on your side of the political fence what they want to hear and tells them that they should be happy about this process whilst they're all living in shoeboxes eating the bug so, hold on eating shoebox let's talk about that perfect housing you brought that up before i'm very happy you brought that up to work because they're stuck in because i looked up i looked up housing jam lasts all day. so i looked up housing because when you mentioned it before you're wrong about housing stamped government multicultural project reports that are funded by people like Soros, that are funded by numerous institutes. So realize you can read an the anti -white methodologies bias. of reports, right? No, do you like, think you can read them? He doesn't understand papers. timelines. He would not be able to read them. Okay, don't even give him that idea. It's hard not to be annoyed with them, but they only have their own experiences to pull from. We need more women, minorities, and older people. Yeah. You need people with, like, skin in the game. Who have some level of grit, who have some level of experience, who have some level of understanding of the stakes. This really is just a... This could be like a wow session for them. Okay, so you talked about housing before, and I decided to look that up after you mentioned it, okay? So I'm citing right now from a study titled Immigration and House Prices in the UK, published in the Economic Journal of Oxford in 2015. I'm going to read a, a selection from the conclusion of that paper. There's a growing literature, body of literature looking at the effect of immigration on house prices in different countries. This is an important dimension of the economic effects of immigration, given the large weight that housing consumption has on the household budget. This article contributes to the immigration literature by estimating the effect of immigration on house prices in the UK and highlighting the channels through which this effect takes place. Using data on immigration and house prices for 170 local authorities in England and Wales, I find that immigration has a negative effect on house prices. An increase in immigrant population equal to 1% of the total local population reduces house prices by 1.7%. So I just look into housing, you're wrong in that. I bet if I look into the other things as well, no, you're going to be wrong in that as well. But we'll house see. prices in the UK are going through the roof. At but it moment, sure as fuck is not because of migration, very clearly. On the housing ladder. But it's the not world, because of migration. Dorky, it seems to be because of something not else. Your little dorky word of world of oh, I found a left wing report but we, but but we, my uh, crap world view. But in the real world, oh, people dear. can't buy a house. People can't get on the housing ladder. And when it comes to social housing, people are locked out of social housing because all of the social housing gets given to stream after stream of different refugees who pour into this country because our borders were open. This is a massive problem for normal people. But in your little liberal bubble, there are no normal people and you can keep reading your little report for <laughs> garbage. They're not worth toilet paper, mate. So to be clear, are, are you saying, oh, sorry, you know, no, no, it, don't encourage him to do that. He's not gonna be able to. So I'm gonna ask you, Mark, very simple. Are you going to completely disregard any published piece of evidence and scientific, uh, like uh, academic work on this uh, that we're going well, to cite. This he discussion. was citing them earlier, so I assume when it benefits him, obviously. But anything that yeah. we brought up, are you going to disregard all of it purely because it comes from academia, Mark? Yes or no? Because I need to know if I need to waste time showing why you're wrong or not. Wait, I asked you a yes or no question. I need an answer on that. I need to you to get a yes or no. Okay, here it is. This is what we needed like an hour ago. No, on that question. Where first time buyers are basically locked out of buying houses. And when you see, they can do it. When they know anything, they can do it. Actually, go down to the level of council housing. It is virtually impossible for people in the UK to get social housing. There are massive waiting lists. And the reason there are massive waiting lists is because there is a growing population. And the engine for population growth in the UK is mass immigration and the birth rate of newly arrived migrant communities.
So, so to be, it's entirely okay. possible. I, I just did get this through. Sorry, uh, Mahvi. So it's entirely possible that housing prices may be on the rise. However, you're making the argument that housing prices are on the rise because of immigration. When we have a study specifically trying to isolate the variables of high prices and immigration, I must be allowed to finish speaking. Can I appeal to the moderation here, Brittany? Since... No. No, you can never appeal to the moderation. Ever. Ever. Talk over him. The moderator will intervene if the moderator will intervene. February Can we get something going on here? I need to the step in here. Alone, I need to be able to finish this. Is it a bot? Is like a Skyrim? Can I? Of index yeah. Halifax spokesperson. Rose, the moderator is Brittany from Politically Provoked. They're not your friend. No. In their defense, I didn't know anything about this platform before I watched this. I mean, I've probably heard about them in the past and I've lost it. it took me five seconds to Google and figure out who they were. This is not your friend. You're debating on their platform, you should know this. No, you can't appeal to a, a right-wing moderator to be fair to you. Brittany, step in, be assertive, go. Yeah, okay, yeah, Mark, let, let, um, let Rose finish what he was going to so, say. So, once again, it is entirely possible that house prices may be on the rise in the UK. I'm not contesting that in any way, shape, or form. However, what causes house prices to move is very complex. You're asserting that it's because of migration. However, when we have a study that specifically isolates the variables of immigration and house prices, it doesn't seem like it's the immigration that's driving up house prices. If anything, it is reducing house prices. So I'm not denying the fact that houses no, are expensive. I am denying the fact, I am denying the fact that it is migration that is driving that increase because you've presented no reasonable evidence for no, it. So I'm going to ask you again my happens, yes or no question from before. Are you going to happens. categorically reject Brittany, happens. please? This is actually oh, a it, white people leave the area, it's <sighs> called white flight, they go to other white areas, and then the house prices go through the roof. And what mm. you're doing is taking isolated slums and ghettos and going, ooh, house prices smell, fell marginally what is this? in a slum area. Well, maybe they fell marginally in a slum area because the migrants who moved there trashed the place. But overall, they're going through the roof because population is rising and white people are being forced into ever more conflict for the remaining houses in the nice areas thanks to mass immigration. Really simple. Really simple. In, in the okay, United I, Kingdom, I, I, I don't know the Brittany, I, this is... But... Yeah, wait, so hold on. Okay. Well, Rose, been, we're trying to get um something else, so yeah, oh, you have like 45 seconds seconds uninterrupted go ahead okay thank you very much okay so once again um the only evidence we have right now for this at the moment seems to go against what you're saying you've presented no credible evidence to the thing you're talking about you're just appearing to well this is what it seems to be like specifically in contrary to the academic evidence we have so i'm going to ask you simple this is a simple yes or no question okay there's no need to go on a monologue about this mark will you categorically reject any piece of academic literature we cite to you in this debate because it's all controlled by george source or whatever yes or no will you do that I'm not giving you a yes or That's no actually answer, incredible. you limp wristed weasel. Alright, well, fuck, you got me there. Alright, go you're on, Matthew, you want to say something, I think. You call him, like, a weasel. Like, you haven't, you're just not engaging with, like, a very simple questions, right? Like, so, no, I mean, because the, the it is problem... obvious that <laughs> okay. the more people you have on a, all resources are finite. And the more people you have in an area competing for those finite resources, that inevitably pushes up the cost of those resources. And in a very small area, which the UK is, we are seeing a growing... I'm not going to give you a yes-no answer. Well, then I will. No, you don't. You're an idiot. You're cherry-picking data, going to a litany of accusations, and shut them down. That's all you got to do. Mark just exposed his throat. Population. Population growth in the UK is driven by mass immigration. That primarily drives white people out 
of many areas. Those white people then move to other white areas and you see a massive house price rise overall. So now, no, we have no evidence that's been established for this whatsoever. Area, You're just rambling say, with no evidence. Snap, fell in a small way in that area, but I have just given you the facts that we have just seen the biggest year-on-year -year rise in house prices, and that coincides with one of the largest years. Did you just walk away? Why are you walking away, Rose? ...of growing migration and one of the largest years for net migration that we've ever seen. I yeah. have some figures, if I can show them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, go ahead. Um, so in the United Kingdom, 86% uh, of population growth is due to immigration. So either... Which longer is this thing? Exactly, folklore fanatic. They either have to talk faster or over him. It's like they want to watch him like a circus event, but every second of airtime he gets, he poisons the air. <clears throat> See, like, here's the thing. What Mark said was repulsive, but in terms of, like, the beats of the debate... He exposed his throat for a brief second. I'm not going to give you a yes or no answer. Oh, now it falls in uh, Rose's court. He can just like say, well, oh, well, I'll, I'll do it for you then. Clearly, you're just cherry picking data points. Uh, you're too much of a coward to actually make a definitive statement as to which you'll actually trust and which you won't. You can't be trusted. You don't know the data. You don't even know anything about the data. Like turn, turn all of the failures that you've had onto him because he just... He just revealed that he made them. That it was all bluster. He had no preparation for this either. He, he was relying on talking points that he internalized years before. That's all he had. Um, you let it slide. You let it slide. So all, all he did was he said what all of his audience is already thinking. And they felt, yeah, yeah, get him. Get him, Mark. So... The audience is very bored. I'm very bored. Good God. The direct immigration or indirect immigration, so the children of immigrants. And obviously, as the population grows, there's more demand for houses. Uh, there was a study done by the government that looked between the years, I think it was something like 2006 and 2014 or something like that, and they established that due to the current rates of immigration, one new house has to be built in England every six minutes. They then looked at the ethnicity of the people who were taking these houses, and they concluded that 90% of new households that are additional in England were headed up by somebody who was born outside the UK. So the growing population in the United Kingdom is increasing the demand for houses. And it's not just houses as well. As we've got a growing population, it's we, we've got bigger class sizes in schools. We've got longer queues at the hospital and the doctors. The growing population has an impact on lots of things, not just housing. Yeah, I so if mean, we want to pivot to something else, that's fine. Yeah, but I, I bet that, if, we, if we look it up on that as well, well you bet we'll be wrong on that about that as well. We'll, we'll see. I think Matthew was trying to um, yeah, go on, say Matthew, something. Sorry, my bad. Yeah, I mean, like this just doesn't seem to be. I remember, like somewhat recently, there was an incident where um, Canada's immigration uh, tended uh, seemed to drop pretty substantially, and housing prices kept rising at the exact same rate. Right? Like, I mean, I know that. Um, uh like like i mean the appeal to like housing prices are rising and immigration is also rising that doesn't really say anything about the causal relationship because obviously um the things that causally impact the prices of housing uh, are going to be very multifaceted right so it's entirely possible that immigration is leading is contributing to a decrease in housing prices um whereas uh, there are just other mechanisms that are pushing in the other direction that are causing uh, an increase in housing prices on the net. But even if immigration did lead to a um, decrease in housing prices, right, um, there are no doubt 
tons of other factors that are also causing uh, an increase in housing prices, right? And so the idea would just be, um, why wouldn't the response be to, I don't know, build more social housing or change zoning laws and so on to lower the prices of housing rather than like kicking out all immigrants when these are policies that we would want to be pursuing anyways, even in the absence of, of immigration, right? So again, the answer is always the same from people like yourself. You say um a lot, and in between the ums, the answer to what we're saying is again, we need to change the whole way we do things in the West to mitigate yeah, the building more houses of mass that would be devastating. Bro, that would be devastating for the West. Be devastating for the West. And also, if we the other thing that I houses. find amazing about? about liberal retards is they claim to be green, they want to, uh, they love the countryside, all things like that, but instead, instead of actually pursuing a green policy of um, a population which isn't growing in an unsustainable manner, they import people from all over the world, which obviously play prices, places huge pressures on the environment. Here in the UK, this extra building has driven several indigenous species of wildlife almost to extinction. So migration is causing wildlife collapse. Is that the argument we're on right now? We are saying that the more people you have in a country and the more development in that country, the less space there is for wildlife. And I am telling you this now, that is another consequence of mass immigration, because mass immigration is what is causing population growth in this country. Are you now arguing that population growth and increased building doesn't affect the wildlife or the countryside? Depends on how you do it. If you do it in a sustainable capacity, then there are very good steps that we can put into place in order to prevent that from happening. We are not currently talking about like New York, where we're like at the peak of population density, and we have no idea how to fit more people into housing, like while doing it sustainably. We're talking about a country with, you know, relatively a lot of open plains and a lot of uh, capabilities for sustainable housing endeavors to be like built and constructed. So it's entirely possible to accommodate for the new population in a way that is sustainable that doesn't harm the like wildlife population. This feels like a yeah, very I strange mean, argument. The but, idea yeah. that the best way. I mean, I can only talk about my own country, but in Britain, I think it's only something like 5% of the, the land is built on, but the rest of the land is not available to build on. It's things like um, lakes, mountains, pastures, farmlands, forests, that kind of stuff. So if we're going to look to build on other areas of land now in the United Kingdom, we're damaging the environment, and I think that's a serious issue. I mean, in Britain, we're now building on uh, wetland. We're building houses on wetland, which are, are not safe and which is incredibly damaging for the species in those areas where we're damaging their habitats. So currently just 6% of the UK is being built on. Do you think that the other like 94%? You are a complete mom. You, I knew he was going to say this. I knew he was going to say this. Well, I just answered that in what I said. <laughs> and so, so, so you're telling me, I'm not sure. So you're telling me that the other 94% is, is all you, you can't build on that? You such an idiot. Your idiocy Wait. is amusing to me on some Mark, level. please, can Laura, because we're talking about something urban. specifically. 2.5% is green urban and 56.7% is far farmland you do realize that farmland is developed land used to grow food understanding so so live. you can't put houses on it or the people can't eat you absolute midwit moron about 34 yeah, so percent <laughs> of the uk so is Rose. undeveloped that is it so Rose, and if you, you develop just... on that death to <laughs> all the animals that live there you okay. gim the figures that you've just looked at six percent mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. have you looked at what the other 94 percent is uh, I'm, and that's what I asked you about. So I asked you, yeah. is the 94% so all on the bill? The other 95% is things like mountains, forests, okay. uh, lakes, rivers, sea, that kind of stuff, coastline, farmlands, um, pastures, that kind of stuff. I just want to see what the comments are here. If I reload this, is it still going to be here? Oh, that's interesting. Those dislikes have changed. The ratio was a lot higher earlier. Now it's 30 up. How long does this go on for? Oh, dear God. This just doesn't end. Oh my god, look look how long this thing is. Oh.
We're not going to go through this all, guys. This is not worth our time. I want to see what um, Rose has to say at the end of this. We'll do something. We'll do something intelligent at the end of this after a quick break. I need some coffee. And uh, antidepressants after this. <laughs> are doing our cozy inaugural um, show today. So, yeah, we are on cozy.tv slash politically provoked. We are also on Odyssey oh, right now. <laughs> Oh, this is this is this is the funniest debate I've ever had in my life. Holy shit, that was some that was some high quality stuff. <laughs> I cannot. We're... No, no, you cannot. You cannot, and you should not. Please, never again. Let's take a break. I'm gonna get some.